Kobe got to talk about Barry. He goes away for a single <laughs> week. And everything is messed up. Yep. What how do we Classic keep Barry? How do we keep him in London? He's in LA right now and it's just all screwed. Everything's screwed. I don't Sounds pretty normal. Yeah. Yeah. Also is so, uh is that your is it blonde roots or do you have normal colored roots? Are so, you are you MMing right now? So last night I definitely uh had my blonde hair and I took my clippers and I went right down the I I picked like a random shortness and I was like okay let's see if this is short enough and I went right down my hair and it was brown at least compared to the blonde. I was like cool, great. So I buzzed my whole head. And then I walk out and I'm like, and I'm talking to Lena, my, my wife. And she goes like, I was like, did I miss any spots? She kind of looks at me for a second. And she's like, you know, you got like a halo thing going on. Right. And I was like, what, what does that mean? She's like, yeah, if you're looking like at your hair, it's fine. But if you're small, like me and you're looking up, like you got like this blonde halo thing going on. And I was like, so it had the tip, the tips were still blonde then. Yes, so the very like apparently uh, the very like quarter inch tips are still blonde. Um Okay. Well Yep, so I'm gonna just grow it out and we're just gonna see where it goes. Yeah. You're gonna have those frosted tips that are all the rage twenty years ago. I heard. Yeah. In the nineties, that was all the thing. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be Can't great. Wait. Anyways, hello, hi, welcome I to Drop Frank. I have a confession to make. I had frosted tips. And I am yeah, not so proud did of I. it. Yeah. And I burned I, all the pictures. That had those. I got sent home from uh, school because of my frosted tips. They made me Zeke, dime back. The the picture that my wife used to uh show her friends from my, my teenage years was uh short bleached spike hair, uh ten gauge earrings, and a tongue piercing. You had a tongue piercing? I did. Did it fully heal back? How does that work? It did. Huh. Yeah. How well, long the tongue is actually take? like one of the fastest healing parts. It, it's it's not long at all. Like you take it out and you give it like a few days and you know you're done at that point. Wow. Yeah, it's one of the, <clears throat> it's uh, typically were hard. one of the hardest ones to like keep in. You know, like you you can't like pull it out while you're, while it's you know in there or else it'll heal like yeah. Super yeah, but, quick. But ears are much harder. So my ears were gauge ten. Gauge is thickness. So oh, my damn. my ears were were pretty thick. And uh, for those, when I first took them out, like you could see through my ears. Like if I was just like you know, hanging out without my earrings on, like you would actually see like the daylight through my ears. Like, uh, <laughs> like you're looking through an ancient cave trying to find on the mural where the light hits for the secret. That's entrance. what like happened that. when you they use my ear yeah. for that. I was actually standing at the foot of the cave, like, Zoop! um, but, uh, yeah, so that like, you have to, you had to do some, some tricks for that, which was interesting. But, huh? Yeah. Massage like super glue or yeah. What'd you do? Uh, there, there was uh, massaging <laughs> was one of them. And, okay. um, also you paid when someone I... to massage your ears. No, oh, I did it. But... Oh, <laughs> a little glimpse into JP's mind right there. You, you massage. You paid someone to massage you. No, I just did it myself. Wait, you could do that. You can you touch, can your, touch own your own ears. You don't. You don't have a body guy. You don't have a body guy like it. What do you mean? Wait. Next, you're gonna tell me you wipe yourself. I mean, <laughs> hold on now. I am cultured and I have a bidet. Okay. We got the guy to wipe the water off when it's done, right? Like, you can't just go around moist. I mean, you can use the little air dryer. Yeah, but then your whole bathroom's stinky. No, mine's got a deodorizer on it. You hit Fine, the... Oh, you got, a, you got a high-tech bad you, you boy. Hit the, you hit the fan, and then you also hit the <clears throat> deodorizer. That's See, amazing. mine's, like, hooked up to the garden hose that. or something. I don't know. It's just, what? like... <laughs> <laughs> my My day is, like, the lowest... Like lowest of the low tech bidets, <laughs> it like it like hooked onto the back of my toilet, and it's like okay, you know well, right? Okay, <laughs> and I gotta, you, I gotta pump it. I gotta pump it every time I I wanna. You little, just little, little hey, squirt of water. <laughs> Jay, uh, Zeke, I don't think you understand what you just did. You just created my favorite website that doesn't exist. Oh. And that is home mo homemade bidets dot com. <laughs> I I, oh, I want to see. I want to see pictures of people making their own bidets out of their own. Using... Like, Mag I want to see MacGyver days is what I want to see. Who's I want to see days made of the most ridiculous, like, 
this, that does not belong in a bidet type of material. Um, I, <laughs> listen, listen. If you're looking for people to do that, like you, I mean, we all know the like people who are who are well versed in 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 creating things with water and pipes. Remember people who used to make bongs out of just about anything. Like get those oh. guys on it. Oh sure, we called, yeah. we called them bong artists. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know. Any get those bong guys artists. involved, and and you'll you're gonna see some amazing constructions from household JP, items you ain't living <laughs> i guess yeah you yeah. don't I have need, i need to get a bong artist, bong guy. artist. <laughs> i need to get a live-in bong artist apparently bong that's... giver that's right exactly thank you chat for that one <laughs> bong, <laughs> bong giver sounds like bone iver or whatever that french he's like is. it's like a college course it's like okay you've got half a tire an orange and a piece of string <laughs> what do you do all right man i think so we're first. I think we're just making another create. This is like a new creator on YouTube who just, just creates bidets. It's like, okay, there's like this. There's this show on NPR called like what is it called? Uh, like the Great Table or Splendid Table or something. Sure. And they like bring ingredients and like, what would you make out of my food? We need that for bongs. So somebody just bring like this is what's in my household drawer. Oh. How would you make that into a bong? And the bong artist would then. You know, see that's a radio show right there. You're welcome. First, I NPR. gotta know, dude. I gotta know, like what. What are we doing? Like, what strain are we doing, man? Is it hybrid? Like, <laughs> like what kind of like what kind of hit do you want off of it? Like, I, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. I gotta know I have, the details. I have to admit, what's hilarious is there's there's like potheads, and then there's the there's like extra potheads, and those are the ones that like try to go into the science to it. So they're actually like they go so far through being a pothead, they're like on the other side. Where they actually sound somewhat intelligent. Have you ever met those? Where they're just like, you guys yeah, man. <laughs> so you have to take the percentage of THC and compare it to the cannabinol intake so it properly and monotonizes in your body. So that way your high is wicked cool. Do you guys watch uh, What We Do in the Shadows? Mm. No, oh. I know what it is, but I've, I've you not haven't watched, watched it. it. Oh my God, it's one of the best shows on TV. But they uh, just, just long story short, uh, in it, they're not just regular vampires. Yeah. There are regular vampires, but there's also energy vampires. And right. those are the people that like suck your energy away by being banal and boring and just like sitting to you and talking to you, small talking to you for hours, and they just suck your energy out and that's how they live. There's one that's a weed shop guy. He's a he's an energy vampire and he just goes on for hours and hours about like strains and, and like you know how to smoke and all this kind of shit. And he just sucks the energy out of that makes sense. That's a that's a good job for him. Yeah. You say energy vampire. Oh. I say passion. Could be saying. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Might be. Might be. Mm. Uh, what we do in the shadows is the name of the show. It's on Hulu, or you can find it on Hulu. Yeah. It's so feels called out. I do. And a brilliant <laughs> movie. It was based on a movie by the uh, the Flight of the Concords guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's is it done or is it still are the seasons still airing? I'm not sure. I thought it was if done. they're going to continue, but I, I like, Dan, I haven't heard they're canceling or anything. So okay, all right, all right. Oh, one anyways. more season. Okay, people are saying one more season, then it's done. Got it. There you go. There you go. Uh, I'm about to start Shogun. Yes, you need to start Shogun. Uh, We're finishing gotta... up uh, Handsmaid's Tale. That show sucks to watch. Yeah, what I <laughs> we talked we talked you about this the last time you brought it up. Me. It's are you. Wait, so by saying you're done, have you watched it all? We're we're in the process. We're like in the last season. Oh, okay. So my, wow. my wife, That's a my lot wife of hand is mo- loving it. Shit. She's like she's like crying every episode cuz it's horrible and and it's, you know, it's a thing for sure. Man, that's a yeah. lot of handmaids tell. You... It dude, it gets that show gets crazy. Yeah, it, it gets wild. Yeah. yeah. Oh it's man. Not a it's not a uh, fun watch, but it is. It is seriously. It's one of the only shows I've watched that is that is actually hard to watch. Yeah, like they'll end an episode, and it's like one of those things where it's, it, it teases what's coming up next episode, and you watch that teaser, and you're like, <laughs> I don't want to watch the next episode. I want nothing to do with that. I don't want oh, to see God. that. I don't want to know about it. Yeah, I don't want to experience it. Yeah, good on you no. for watching it. It's a. It's definitely not a. It's not fun. Uh, but it's it's good. Uh, speaking of a show that that by the description, I was like, I don't want to watch this. I did end up watching it though. Uh, that quiet on set Nickelodeon thing. What is that? What's that? Oh, you 
Oh, well, man, it's been fucking all over the internet. Like, I'm surprised you guys haven't heard of it. Uh-uh. It's, it's, it's called Quiet On Set. It's a documentary about how kids were very badly mistreated during, the, uh, during some of the Nickelodeon oh. years. Oh. Yeah. Well, I've seen some of the fallout of that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's like, they're like, hey, you want to you wanna hear stories about kids being abused, you know, verbally emotionally and sexually like dude no i don't and what's even what's even crazier is if, if that's what i'm thinking of there's some big names in that that like went through yeah. that whole yeah like ariana grand mm -hmm. i think was one of the people and like there was a few others grand. that were ariana were. grande Co. Uh, grande yeah grande grande that's probably correct okay. yeah no. thank you yeah no, i didn't, I've never, I didn't. Actually, <laughs> I've never actually heard any of her songs i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> You have, you just you, don't know yeah. what you're, I'm sure. I probably, probably I probably haven't. It's probably been a commercial. Yeah. Or Doesn't she have no seven? Answer. Isn't Seven Rings one of her songs or no? Does anyone know? Why did I just I thought ask? there was one ring? Why did I, I just ask two 40 year old? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, seven, there's seven rings now? <laughs> I thought there, what about the one they took there's, to the volcano? There's a bunch of Dragon Balls and there's seven rings. That's everyone knows that. But there's only one Lord of Ring Gollum. <laughs> that is true. That Great is point, true. Yeah. And that's my segue to punch through to talk about video games. That's what we do Yay! sometimes here uh, every once in a while on Drop Frames. Uh, Co was gone last week. He was in the lands of California, I guess. BDC, my first one, yeah. Yeah, how many, uh, what, what was, so I always like to ask people that go to GDC the trend of the year. Uh, in recent years, NFTs, crypto were definitely the trends. I think that's died off this year. I'm going to go with AI. How many AI pitches did you get across the weekend? Uh, I, I, a huge, there's, AI is huge. AI, AI is the wave currently. <laughs> yes. It's, it's that and optimism. Optimism. Yeah. Yes. Really? The, in, the investing community is seeing the game dev slouch as opportunity. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, which is interesting. Because I have to admit, like going to GDC, I was expected, I was expecting to see a, like a very downtrodden atmosphere. You know, game dev is at a very tough time. Yeah. Um, we're still in arguably the, the game depression, if you want to call it that. The game dev depression, I should call it. Um, but the, yeah. the, a lot of the stuff I was there, uh, I was wearing, I was wearing, I went to GDC wearing multiple hats. And it was kind of interesting because I was existing in different, like I would go to one group event and be around a whole bunch of investors. And then I would like literally jump in an Uber and go to another one and be in a room full of developers. And then I would jump in a car and go to another one and be in a room full of creators. <laughs> so it was like, it was very interesting because I would basically go between these different, very distinct groups and kind of try to get as much of a feel, make as many connections as I can. And the overall tone of GDC is that the people, the people with the money and even a lot of the game devs are relatively optimistic they're seeing this kind of like a forest burn in a lot of ways mm. and what i mean by that is is they will purposefully burn forests to clear out underbrush and area so in the future more can thrive and i heard that analogy so much at gdc when i went there like a lot of people are like you know game dev has been in a bad place for a while and we're seeing the ramifications of that all come to a head and there's a very good chance that some very good things could come out of this. And there's also some people that are incredibly optimistic because as we are dealing with this kind of game dev depression, especially for more structured game dev, there are all of these AI tools coming out that are making game devs extremely easier and more importantly, so smaller teams can do much grander projects. I mean, we're talking about stuff, for instance, like uh, I went to this thing called A16Z Demo Days. And what, what A16Z is, is a company I work with. It's Andreessen Horowitz. They recently opened up a games thing. I'm an A16Z creator scout, uh, which means I basically hate, help find them things to invest in, and then I invest in them. And I went to this thing called Demo Days, which is essentially, they have this incubator called Speed Run, which is this giant program where they invite literally thousands and thousands of companies. In fact, there were almost 4,000. And they whittle them down to, in this case, 37. And every one of these companies has potential, but like the, this is like the best of the best. And then they whittle that down to 37. And then each of them, they give 750 to a million dollars. And they say, go develop your idea. And at GDC, they did this thing called Demo Days, where all of those 37 people got to have three minutes apiece to talk about their product. <laughs> and when I was in this room with those 37 companies and about two to 300 
industry people, investors, company owners, founders. In that room, I, I, I promise you, this was like the future of game dev in this room. I mean, some of these companies were making things that make like the 3D art and rigging stuff where a lot of graphic designers have to spend hours and hours and hours of their time putting maps on things and, and linking up animations and, and structuring points and stuff. These guys were showing programs that would take literally four hours of dev work and do it in five minutes automatically. Like not even need you to be there. You literally just like dump these 3D models into folders and they put full map or pull full maps on them, fully rig them, test animations, they'll automatically apply all sorts of things. They are, they have animation systems where you will take a 3D model and then there's like an animation library. And you could drag the animation over the model and it will rig it and animate it. Hmm. And then you can using text alter what the animation does. Okay, I want it more wobbly. I want him to look more drunk. And it will change the animation, like right there. It's, it's incredible. It's, I yeah. mean, and, and this is just, this is a fraction of the stuff that's coming. So that kind of stuff, plus the fact that like more structured game dev is clearly in a metamorphosis period, plus the fact that we have this rise of these indie projects like Pow, Pow World, and you know, we have Chocolatier around the court. We have all the Core Keeper, all these programs that have like, completely in huge successes, but not taking any of the traditional paths. All of this whirlwind together makes it so there's a lot of people that are like, this is, this is a magical time to start laying the groundwork for a much more vibrant future of game day. So there was a lot of that, a surprising amount. Um, I honestly like went there expecting to come out like a little bit depressed, <laughs> but there's a lot of people that are, are very optimistic about this period. Does it mean that, that, Everything is great and we're, no, not at all. What I'm talking about people are optimistic for is the potential of the future. Yeah. People aren't optimistic about anything going on right now, but they are very optimistic about the, the, the runway that is being paved for a potential, like very interesting future. Yeah. So game dev, like the game devs themselves, um, we're still in the thick of this game dev depression. You know, there, there is, there is a lot of camaraderie among game devs about, you know, there's a whole, what was very interesting is a, Lots of folks trying to find other people jobs. Like it was, it was sure. very cool how many people were like, I frequently I would be in a discussion and someone would just walk up and be like, hey, Phil, what's going on? Hey, I've got like three artists and two animators. Like, do you need anyone for your project? I know you're working on this. Like, like a lot of just random people being like, I know this guy, I know these people, I've got this group. And uh, that was very, very cool. So that was, that was awesome. And then <clears throat> the final hat that I wore for Emberville and Mad Mushroom, the final two hats, uh, that was, I mean, that stuff was just more kind of business stuff. Met with some people who were interested in publishing Emberville, uh, did like the Mad Mushroom Mixer. The Mad Mushroom Mixer was crazy because there was like 20 people there that helped found Twitch and were like some of the first people that worked at Twitch. Oh, nice. So, I mean, it was wild. Like all the people, I, I could name off like 20 names and both of you would know most of them. I mean, the first day I hung out with Faustus at his, at his apartment for like the whole day. Nice. And, uh, and then, you know, Soma and, and Fish, like all those people uh, were at the Mad Mushroom Mixer. That was, it was wild. It was crazy to be in a circle and be like, this is the same circle of people I would have stood with at the first TwitchCon. And we're all right here, like chatting and drinking beers and having a good time and half of them are drunk off their ass. So that was, that was, uh, uh, no, that, that sounds like Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> I bought an extremely expensive GDC ticket. Oh, oh yeah. Tickets are pretty pricey in general, aren't they? I didn't go in GDC. You didn't enter in once. I, I literally did not go in. I didn't even pick up my badge. <laughs> I, I mean, much, I, there was like, as this is the first, yeah. everyone warned me about this. Yeah. That makes everyone, sense. Everyone was like, you don't go to GDC for GDC. You go there for the networking. And I was like, yeah, right. There's no way I'm going to have enough to do to like, not even have a minute to go to GDC. Yeah. Uh, that's not the case at all. The, the multiple small times I had like free time, I would just be walking somewhere and get grabbed by somebody and, and we'd be doing stuff. And the whole thing was so surreal because every, everyone at GD, like GDC is apparently where everyone goes, especially now that E3 is dead. Yeah. So, you know, like I'm walking out of the, the, the uh, uh, freaking hotel to go to a dinner i'm walking by and i'm just like oh i know i, I know that guy hey what's up he points at me he goes hey what's going on co and jeff keely walks over and we start talking about random stuff and then like i walk out the door i see like two more game directors um as i'm getting into the uber and then i go out to the dinner i'm to the left i'm at dinner you know co-founder blizzard to my right game director of dave the diver to my left game director of alan wake two across from me and this was just like a normal thing. Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't like a special event. It was just like, everyone just has to eat. So people just like go out and get, so there's just people, you know, and see everywhere. Like it was 
It's very wild. It was like a rock concert of game devs. Yeah, I mean that's GDC in yeah. a nutshell, right? It's, it's it, been but like it was the, it was very weird. It's been like the industry um, secret, I would say, for a long time now. That that's where yeah. that's where they all go and act like normal people. Wait, is it is it in LA or San Francisco? It's San Francisco, right? San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What are you laughing at? <laughs> they act like normal people. They act like normal that. people. You know. Yeah. Oh, there there were so many times during GDC where I was just like standing in front of a group of people, just being like, "Act normal. He's act normal. Act normal." See, Co is acting like normal people. I, I was doing my best to act normal. There was <laughs> there were multiple times when I was like overflowing with fangirlism, just like wanting to you know, like just a launch into some of these people. But I just had to just sit there. Oh, oh, it's very nice to meet you. Oh, I I do know of your game. It was great. Yeah. Was... Be like, professional. Be professional. Yeah. Giga professional name drop. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got it. Yep. How much did you see in San Francisco? Devs. Not one. How much we're what? just innocent devs. Oh yeah, normal devs. Are good. <laughs> just innocent. Are you doing the I'm just an innocent man? Me? <laughs> That's what that is. Yeah. Every, okay. Every Monday, um, you got to retweet there, it. There, I was warned by so many people about San Francisco. It was it was totally fine. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, don't, yeah. I think San Francisco during a convention, I feel is different because everyone everyone is telling everyone where not to go, and everywhere sure. you do go is other convention people, and the people that make that kind of the issues that you hear about in the media, they don't tend to gravitate towards groups. In fact, they try to stay away from them. Yeah. So there was like this one area that I was told 50 times, like, you do not go to the tenderloin. <laughs> yeah, the tenderloin, you, yeah. You do not go to the tenderloin. You gotta stay out of like, it. Like I had I had one um I had one Uber driver who was like, Yeah, man, this one time I was going through the it was a southern guy. This one time I was going through the tenderloin, man, and like these guys walked in front of my car. They were all doing this like crip walk, like uh, look like a zombie, and they all got in front so I couldn't move. And then all of a sudden, like more walked around me, and they all stood in a circle. And I was like, "What do you guys want?" And none of them said anything. And they just stood there. So eventually, I just like slowly drove forward and kind of pushed them out of the way and kind of kept going. And I looked back, and they were all just standing there looking weird. Don't go to the tenderloin, man. <laughs> Damn. Don't go to the tenderloin. No, don't don't go there, man. It's weird. Yeah, that, that cab driver. And the best part was he told shit. me that story. He's like, oh, you're from North Carolina? Okay, I want to tell you something as a Southern boy. <laughs> and then he liked it. Ah, you're the like, Southern boy. Oh, yeah. okay. There you I go. was like, okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Of course, of course, he was talking Southern, so I ought to be, thanks, man. I appreciate that. So yeah, nice you got to put on the twang. Thanks. That's how it goes. Yeah. I appreciate it. That's how it goes. Deal. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Makes sense. He's like, Godspeed, brother. Godspeed. <laughs> nice. So otherwise, a good trip. Yeah, it was I mean, great. that was, that was, it was a awesome. I was a five day trip, right? Hundred uh, percent. I went. I went two days. Funny enough, it started as four days. Oh. And then I learned Dragon's Dogma was there, and then Capcom told me, "Oh, we're releasing a day early." And then yeah. all of my stuff had to be compact. And that's one of the reasons I couldn't go to GDC because originally I had like four days scheduled out, and then they ah, got like compacted okay. to two. So I, I mean, I had uh, eleven meetings the first day, fourteen the second. Like it was just, it was just, you know, jam packed. Yeah, the work. Yeah, it was fun, but it was work. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. I will say the blonde hair was a great conversation starter. So I many saw you in all those photos that you were retweeting. Dude. And I was like, God, that. So I Ooh. had people, I had people that are three times, uh, five, 10 times more famous than I will ever be. Yeah. And they would walk up to me and be like, why? <laughs> I imagine like a Steve Jobs <laughs> walking oh, up dude, to they, you. He's just studying your hair. And they, they, they really went. They just kind of let me like, I What's... don't get it. I had one guy that did one of these where they walked up with their hand on their face and they did one of these. What's uh what's going on here? <laughs> like a Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, like, like exactly like a Jeff Goldblum. Like just like what's uh what's this? Nice. What's going on here? And I was just like, yeah. But then see that was it was actually kind of great because then that always like, every started. every single exactly. And and I and I promise I talked to a lot more people than I probably would have because they walked up and asked about the hair. And, you know, that leads me to the charity thing. A few people didn't even know, like, a lot of the people that asked about the hair, because, again, it looked ridiculous, were investors. Mm. So I would, I would be like, oh, yeah, it's a charity stream. And there were people, like, lifelong investors that would look at me and be like, charity stream? <laughs> like, what is, what is that? What is and I'd charity? have to, like, tell them and stuff. And they'd be like, that's amazing. Like, it was, it was really interesting. Like, these guys in business. Suit, really? Like, it was, it, was, it was very fun. It was, oh, I, I thought it was say, like, I thought it was like game dev, like, game dev, like, you have enough money to give to somebody else? <laughs> no, um, why, why I, I are will, the people not telling me? Yeah, it 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 is also like it's wild. I mean, this this thing we've been doing has been you know ten plus years old yeah. easily. There are still 
just like cat hair flick. Yeah, there's I just still thought. so there's still so many people that live and function in our and in the periphery of our gaming world that just do not understand what streaming is, why it functions, why it happens. I I had to explain to multiple people at GDC. What is a sponsored stream? Why does it actually happen? What is the benefit of it? Why do people sure. prioritize it over traditional media? Like, it's 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 crazy how um, like, this is so new for us, but like it's not even penetrated <laughs> some worlds that are in the periphery of like actual game dev stuff. It's uh, very interesting. Makes sense. I really didn't. I thought they would be like hip to all of our shit. No, yeah, not, not at all. I think a lot of people live in their own worlds and they become specialists yeah. of their own world. And if they need something from another world, they have a guy for that or they have a team okay. for that or, or a company for that. So they don't really deal with it a lot themselves. And then yeah. like when, so when it comes down to like talking to somebody directly about it, they don't a lot of times like have the, the explicit tools they need to like understand, you know, all the lingo and everything that we're talking about and everything. So, yeah. But I mean, yeah. it was, it was, it was very cool. It was very cool. How was the uh, the creator vibe at a place like GDC? Non-existent. Yeah, it's not a it's not a creator thing. It's not a, it's not a consumer thing. Sure. So it's like not only there, there's not there's not only not creators there. There's not like fans there. Like mm -hmm. ev everyone there is either there to network to get something for their position or to find a new position. Yeah. Um, it's it's not really uh. It's what it's what E three used to be, and from everyone I talked to there. Like many people were like, yeah, we've just moved all of our traditional E3 stuff to GDC. Like that is GDC. All the meetings. We've, we've stuff, commercialized, yeah. we've centralized, and now everything happens at our GDC. Um, a lot of people told me that it was the only thing they went to uh, was hmm. GDC. So, well, how much? I mean, and, and that, just just for them, can I just say how much it fucking sucks that it's in San Francisco and how fucking expensive that place is? Like, come on, guys, let's, it's let's make it a little bit. Or viable for like you know people who you know i hate i hate to bring up indie but like indie folks who like don't have that fucking kind of money to spend yeah on a hotel and no. meals and shit not only that there is a a large presence of gdc who is acutely aware of what you're saying and they're basically saying like gdc is going the opposite direction of it should it should as the new head honcho be trying to do more to welcome more people and to really solidify itself as the new go-to thing but instead they're going the opposite direction i mean they're 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 taking advantage of their position they're they're businessing their position they're you know reducing resources raising costs kind of thing um and and well it, they're not so much raising costs but it's still just massively expensive like it, it cost i think a gdc ticket is i just uh, pulled that up it's like a thousand fucking, plus dollars it's expensive. yeah it's crazy it's crazy it's cra yeah there you go yeah the all access pass is twenty five hundred dollars I mean, that's like a sizable portion of some indie budgets. And that yeah. is just, and again, and, and, and it just goes to show you, like Rami was huge about this all over Twitter before it came. And he was preaching. He was like, do not buy a GDC ticket if you're going to GDC. Like you're going to be doing more networking. Like only get whatever you need if you have specific things you want to go to and watch at GDC. But I mean, 95% of the stuff that happens at GDC happens in the hotel lobbies, at the dinners that happen, at the random social events that pop up like there are places there are hotel lobbies that they tell you you can go to you have free time you want to network you go to these <laughs> hotels lobbies yeah they will be full during gdc and just go start talking to people just go meet people um and it's yeah it was uh that, well, that i stuff mean that's was, was that's kind of cool. like con life you know like like if like i've made 10 20 fold more friends like in the in the in the parking lot in the hotel bar in the restaurant, yeah. in the, you know, club, whatever, like, than I ever made on the con floor, you know? Yeah, I, con floors are co... It was funny how reminiscent it was of, like, how many conventions I used to go to, but never actually stepped foot on the show floor because no one goes to the show floor. <laughs> That's, like, the quintessential con experience, uh, at least for me. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that these tickets are, are as expensive as they as they are. Um, and also th the cool thing too, is I don't know if they're still doing this. I know in the past the GDC has released a lot of the, uh, different talks and stuff like that, that happen at the event on like YouTube. And so they just put all those, those, those talks that you want to see in person That's out good. there to watch after the fact. So, 
Um, I really hope that the we'll, we'll get to when we get to the news, the one that uh, Sven did on uh, Baldur's Gate three, because that that made a lot of uh, news. He's already released a clarification yeah. tweet. Yeah he, yeah, he put a lot of stuff out about that. But I would just love to hear that talk because uh, it sounds like it was super interesting. Um, and that's one of like lots hundreds. of talks like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That I would just love to hear um, developers, you know, talking shop and saying like, we did this because of this. Uh, and it's not just a Reddit post where gamers are telling them how they should have done this. <laughs> it's like, no, it's a healthy conversation between devs. Um, so I will, uh, I'll be on the, the lookout for all that stuff whenever it comes up. Um, what happened to BG3? We'll, we'll talk about the BG3 stuff in a minute. Nothing, nothing happened to it. It was just some interesting news that came out about right. its production and such. But yeah, unless yeah. we would just want to go right into it. I'm done with GDC. GDC was awesome and cool. that was it uh yeah let's just use that as a segue then uh let's talk okay. about uh the news Baldur's gate 3 <clears throat> obviously making a lot of it this past week uh yes. well i should say i should i guess finn Sven's comments around Baldur's gate 3 making a lot of the news um it kind of started was... around the gdc awards where they won game of the year and he gave a speech and talked about it and then it bled into his uh his talk the next day but yeah co i i think you know most of it so, so. The, the big thing is that when Sven gave his speech slash talk, he talked a lot about publishing. He talked a lot about the ethics of publishing. And most importantly, he, he said some things that caused some people to think that there was friction between Baldur's Gate 3 and Wizards of the Coast. And he didn't directly address it, which is, of course, why we're, you know, why he had to clarify later. But what that did is that brought up this really interesting thing where it's like, did Wizards of the Coast like do something to push Larian away? Because Larian also announced that there will be no Baldur's Gate 3 DLC and they are not currently planning or working on Baldur's Gate 4. Well, that was Sven. No Baldur's Gate 3, D yeah. 3 DLC from them. Yeah. Yes, there will not be any Baldur's Gate 3 DLC from Larian and they will not be making Baldur's Gate 4. And that they had already started their next project. So they are... They're committed to whatever they're doing, and we will not be seeing any more of that. So, of course, that plus these little comments led the internet to be like, oh, God, what happened between Larian and Wizards Wizard of the Coast? Right. Like, if you see, like, this what he said and this what he said, he must be referring to their relationship. And, you know, they were just a whole bunch of conjecture. And so, <clears throat> to be clear, Sven did tweet out. And do you have that exact tweet at uh, there, I'm trying to find like all of the things that happened and that he said, but yes, I can try to find the exact tweet. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you read out the verbatim stuff, but essentially he came out and was like, nah, dude, we're cool. Wizard of the Coast was cool. Like, that's not what we were talking about. Everything's good. <laughs> so, which, I mean, here's the thing. He kind of had to do anyway. So now people are like, did he do that? Cause he had to, yeah. or like, it's, it's just one of those weird situations of somebody's alluding to something and we don't even know if he's able to say yeah. what he's alluding to if he's even alluding to it yeah here's the uh, i will say that i i do think that sven unfortunately created a bit of drama from this. oh 100 <laughs> percent. yeah without question i think this is the tweet yeah. that you're referencing here reading the reddit th threads yeah all right care up something right, right, uh, real quick to stop you real quick any tweet that starts reading the Reddit threads, <laughs> sure. you know you're in trouble yeah. at that point. Wizards of the Coast is not to blame for us taking a different direction. On the contrary, they really did their best and have been a great licensor for us, letting us do our own thing. This is because it's what's best for Larian. So Yes, which again, kind of answers the question, but at the same time, now people are looking at the last line of that tweet yeah. and are going, what does he mean Wizards of the Coast isn't the best for Larian? <laughs> So it's like this, he just can't win. He just can't win. He can't win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was kind of on a, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, here's the thing is, is you know, Baldur's Gate three obviously is what it is. And because of that, anything that someone like Sven says, it's going to have a spotlight on it. It's going to be highlighted. It's going to be, it's gonna have to be a microscope. on Yeah. It sure. And so yeah. I, I think this is kind of that, this is that occurring and he's realizing like, oh, I can't just. I have to be careful how I word things moving forward. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> in, in, the, in the speech that he gave when they won game of the year, um, he said, greed has been fucking this whole thing up for so long since I started. Uh, this was when he collected the best narrative award for Baldur's Gate 3. I've been fighting publishers my entire life and I keep on seeing the same, same, same mistakes over and over. 
It's always the quarterly profits. The only thing that matters are the numbers. And when you fire everybody, and then the next year say, shit, I'm out of developers. And then you start hiring people again, and then you do acquisitions, and then you put them in the same loop again, and it's just broken. You don't have to. You can make reserves. Just slow down a bit. Slow down on the greed. Be resilient. Take care of the people. Don't lose the institutional knowledge that's been built up and the people you lose every single time. So you have to go through the same cycle over and over and over. It really pisses me off. So I like what he said, but that's yeah. that's a bold thing to say in a room <laughs> that he said it in. Uh, yeah, especially considering a lot of the people in that audience represented the exact companies that he was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 a, you know what. <clears throat> Not wrong. It's a nice thought. It's a nice thought. You know what else? Like socialism, communism, like that shit would work if everybody's willing to participate, probably, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Slow down on the green, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Hopefully what I'm saying. Like, like that too. great idea. It's a it's a wonderful idea and it would work. Who's going to participate though? I mean, Sucks. It is I wanted to. I want it to work. I want it to work. Yeah. yeah. It was, well, I mean, uh, it was a reading, interesting don't, time. Just don't be greedy, threads, five head. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah exactly. just don't be greedy. Just don't, don't be greedy. greedy. It's fine. Um, don't, don't be greedy, Kay. He, he was not the only one that kind of had that narrative. Uh, Alana Pierce, who was hosting um, mm. the event, also came out and said, uh, people in this room have lost their jobs. People who normally attend GDC every year have had to cancel because coming here is sort of an extravagant luxury when you don't know when your next paycheck is coming. We've lost people with years of experience. We've worked hard to make some of the games nominated tonight, but more importantly, we watched our friends get laid off. We've seen how that impacts their families and their children. So, yeah, it was it was definitely, it was a, a topic of conversation. A lot of people had a lot of things to say um, about It's good that, that gets brought up, though. It's good that they talk about it. I for mean, sure like it's it's one of those things that it's this is this is not the kind of discussion you want to have behind closed doors and you know it's good to get it said yeah yeah, yeah. without without question I, I absolutely agree and i i think and i think oftentimes with uh what what words can't do and this is this goes for all kinds of shit just like being a good human being being a good business being honest, is is just fucking lead by example and i think larian is very much doing that just showing what they've accomplished with what and how they've how they've accomplished it yeah yeah well i i i tweeted out like i'm so i think so many people are like sad and upset that uh you know there's no more Baldur's gate 3 from larry and they're still gonna patch it and things like that but there's no new content is, is the big thing there um i think it you know is a fan of larry and i think that's the most exciting thing they could have done uh I'm, yeah i'm a thousand percent okay with it yeah um, and then I saw so many people saying like, oh, I would love Larry to, to take over X, Y, Z IP. And it's like, no, I want them to do their own thing. I want, I want them to do a whole brand new thing <clears throat> where they have full ownership what? over. I don't want <laughs> anyone. Let's get, let's get DOS three. Let's get a new IP. Like, yeah. That's whatever. But wasn't yeah. that one of Sven's like tweets? Like not like, I don't know if it was related or whatever, but he said, he's like, we're working on something bigger than Baldur's Gate three. If you can believe that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a new IP that they're doing. I think uh, yeah. they said it's not Divinity. Is is I want to say that yep. came out of all. So of it's this. not Divinity. It's not Baldur's nope. Gate three. We know they're not working with Witchers of the Coast, so it's not like Icewind Dale or something like that. So <laughs> you yeah. say Witchers of the Coast. Witchers of the Coast. Witchers of the Coast. That's that's it. Geralt. Yeah, Geralt at the top. Yeah, it's a totally it new is. IP, brand new stuff, which is exciting. Like, great. Absolutely. That's that's the most exciting thing they could be doing. Dude, and this uh, is their the fucking Baldur's Gate 3 is their golden ticket to do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. Because people be like, all right, give us more, Larian. We love that shit. So now you have your next game. We're going to buy it. Probably sight, sight unseen. We're going to get into it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And then because of all the stuff that, that Sven said and, and uh, comment, like there's been so many just splintered news stories about this. The Alcat founder um was breaking down rpg budgets and and talking about larian's mm -hmm. impacts on the genre and he said uh quote we can't invest 200 million to make Baldur's gate 3 um and he goes on to talk about um how voice acting um 
Here, I'll just give you the full quote. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 has a gigantic budget. Few studios can actually afford this, let alone put so much money into an isometric game. I know this was already the second game for Larian that was hit or miss situation when you invest all your money in one shot and they wait to see if it hits or not. Good for them. They are brave people and it's clear uh, that they are not doing this in vain. But again, we can't invest, say, $200 million to make Baldur's Gate 3. We don't have that kind of money yet and I don't know of any company in the world that would invest in so much money in a CRPG. He didn't... There were no lies. <laughs> that no lies no detected. Lies. I mean, especially before Larian, that was a pipe dream. That's one of the reasons we never saw big CRPGs. It's one of the reasons Baldur's Gate 3 is such an anomaly, like we've talked about so many times on, on this show. So. Yep, yep. That was the uh, founder and CEO of Alcat Games, uh, Oleg Schlipchevesky. <laughs> Let's go with that. It's S-H-P-I-L... C H E V S K I Y. Spilchevsky. Great. That's probably that's probably yeah. yeah. We'll take it. We'll take it. Um then there was other uh there was another thing about how much Baldur's Gate 3 is sold. I want to say I don't know where the quote came from, but they said that it was double what Divinity Original Sin 2 has done, which means that it sold about 15 million copies. Uh, this came from an interview on GameSpot. Yeah, Sw uh, Sven said it's almost doubled DOS 2 now, so it's doing really, 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 really well, as DOS 2 was very successful, so it did beyond what we expected. Um, that's crazy. Wow. 15 million copies Actually of that. Actually crazy. Yeah. yeah. Also, when you consider the fact that, like, that game is not, go it hasn't gone on sale for more than, like, what, 10 or 15% off? Like, it's always been... At bare minimum, a forty dollar game, a fifty dollar game. So it's wild, Pretty incredible. Yeah, huge, huge uh, levels of success for them. Uh, and you know, now they're throwing that towards their own IP, so they potentially the highest even... sale was ten percent off. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's actually that's, crazy. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Um, outside of all this, the Hasbro executive said that uh, Baldur's Gate 3, quote, proved for us that people really wanted great D&D &D games. Uh, and they support Larian's plan to, quote, take the time uh, we need moving forward, whatever that is. So Now, Hasbro is getting in on that because they have a board game with them, right? Maybe. Let's see. Uh, Hasbro... Isn't there like a board game or something? They might. Maybe. Uh, Hasbro, Hasbro owns Wizards of the Coast. Yes, yeah. Sorry, that's the connection there. Ah, Hasbro the owns Wizards. I, I was not. I did not know that was the. Okay, there we go. Gotcha. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I thought you. Yeah, I did not know that. Nope. Got it. Um, not a big Wizards guy. Not a big Magic guy. I don't really. Yeah. Time. They also said that they're working on quote another really really cool D and D game. Uh, there's a high quality, uh, or wait, where is this at? I want to see if he says anything. It says now that Hasbro is building its own internal game development studios, we're taking a similar approach with internal titles, adding that quote. We've got to make sure the, the ones coming in from our AAA studios hit home in a big, you know, coming out from our AAA studios hit home in a big way. I I have to admit every time I see a big company, like, like a, like a, like a Hasbro style company say something like that. It's kind of like, I'm waiting for that next sentence. We're using cutting edge narrative AI and voice acting, including AI <laughs> oh, you want to, talk to bring AI you the most, <laughs> the most amazing experiences you've ever experienced <laughs> on yeah. the blockchain via Web3. Let's uh, eat the game to receive your own NFTs of your adventure. We can you jump. can sell to your friend. We can jump from the Baldur's Gate 3 stuff into uh, Ubisoft. And how they're using generative AI prototype to change narratives uh, for NPCs. They put out a big blog post about this. Um, and they kind of go into it from <clears throat> Lucy O'Brien. Uh, let me, here's, let me... here's the big thing. Somebody said a one line response and it's a simple response and it's a simple thing, but I have to admit, it's one of those things where there's a surface level, but then there's a lot going on under the surface if you really think about it. And that is somebody was like, it was a tweet. And they basically were like, okay, AI in games, 
cool. You want to use it to make some fun new experiences. You want to make it to make it like do some 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 interesting game mechanics. AI in games cool. But when AI starts writing things, when AI starts delivering my narrative experience, and here's the line. Why would I want to read anything that nobody's written? Yeah. And it's really interesting because I read that once and was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But then I read it again and I was like, holy shit. You're right. Because here's the thing. Like when, when a human writes something in narrative, they're thinking of what happened before it. They're thinking about where it's going. They're thinking where it fits in the big narrative. There, there's like all these extra things that play into a person writing a sentence. But when an AI does it, it's like, it's just reactionary. Like, you know, it's, it's not, there, there's, there's this huge depth and breadth of context that just evaporates. It's just, dis it's not there. Yeah. It's uh, soulless. So it's like, it doesn't mean it couldn't recreate human writing. It doesn't mean it could fool you. I mean, obviously it could. There's it's a hundred percent. That's the goal is to fool But in you. the same vein, it's like without that, that more like involved and deep intention, without the, the idea of where it's going, without the meaning of where it's placed in the larger scheme, like AI is nowhere near that kind of thing yet. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not like we're not, we're not seeing anything. We're not seeing AI writing compelling stories. You know, it's just like, we're just kind of regurgitating combinations of things that it's fed. So it's, it's, it's interesting to think about. I, I, we talked a lot about narrative AI at GDC and even the companies, even the companies that are trying to make, and yes, they're absolutely out there. The companies question. that are trying to make the Baldur's Gate 3 where every companion is an AI that lives out their own story with their own motivations. Even those people are like, oh yeah, we're a long way from like AI making the game story. Like AI making like the Game of Thrones style, you know, like, like one guy that I talked to it's interesting because I had used this example in the past and he used it when I was talking to him. He goes, AI is a long way from Hodor moments. <laughs> and I was like, I know exactly what you mean by that. And he goes, yeah, AI, like there's nothing we can do to tell it like, yeah, make a Hodor moment. Like it just, it just doesn't happen. And um, just be so a it's, it's of that. Yeah. Like, it well, won't no, well we, we discussed it more. What we were talking about is like AI is not very good at the nuance of, of, multi-stage foundational laying to a reveal like that's not it doesn't like there's no models that really kind of do that like it's all reactionary it's all you put in this you get out that you know so it's it's yeah we're quite a quite away from from that thankfully we're not going to see that in games anytime soon and if we do unfortunately the implementation is probably not going to be great what ai is great for is small talk social stuff flavor things like that and that's where we're seeing implementations that might actually be okay um party dialogue stuff like that you know like like th that that are all about the character like minor things that may situational things but yeah we're not none of the stuff i saw unfortunately was impressive it yeah. had to do with ai story stuff like St still i saw more than a few things early days in that for sure still very uh, you know I'm, I'm i was thinking about like I, you got me talking you you got me thinking about like small talk and stuff and uh like how like i was thinking wouldn't it be nice? You know, you know how in, in a lot of games, there's a shopkeep and you go to the shopkeep and he has the same first opening line every time. And you have to hear it a thousand fucking times during one game. Yep. Wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be kind of neat if it was a thousand different things he said, like every time you go into the shop? That's exactly the kind of stuff where they're actually making Edroads and AI, where it's like, you know, different greetings, different goodbyes, random small talk, like that kind of stuff. Um, that's where it's actually making headways. Yeah. And that's where it's actually kind of cool because like that, all, all that stuff is very, it's very contained and it's very just for flavor, you know, that, and that's, that's completely different than telling a story. Those are two different things. So, you know, that, that kind of stuff I think is wildly cool and, uh, when done ethically and properly. <laughs> yeah. I, I already have like, uh, profound is a pretty strong word but i'll i'll use it here i already have those moments when just in a game a character reacts to something that's happened in the story and says something about like oh blah 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 and this thing you did 10 minutes ago and you're like oh well that's cool what if that was happening like what if all small talk was like that like you cut a mob's uh, head off in the last combat 
God, that got really brutal and savage back there, didn't it? Why did you massacre that mob? <laughs> well, a way to a way to think about it is you walk through a town like in Dragon's Dogma. Yeah. And all the villagers are AI chatting to themselves about events that happen in the world. Right. And everything you do has a tag associated with it. And anytime you do one of those things, that tag gets added into all potential AI conversations that could happen. So like there there are there are some interesting things that AI could do. Um, it's not like, it, and that's, and I really don't like when people just swear it off as a whole, especially considering AI means so many different things. It is not just AI. In it's games. a very like, broad AI yeah. in game dev. There's AI in pipeline. There's AI in server architecture. There's like, there's AI everywhere. So to just be yeah. like AI bad, that's eh, just ignorant. Let's be real. Yeah. But when it, when you talk about specific applications, um, there, there are some very cool things that could do, but the, the goal is going to be making sure that it does what it does well and doesn't bleed into what it doesn't. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 We'll oh, see. For the record, I do want to point out, I saw someone mentioning this. There was at GDC a full pipeline that plugged into other AI materials where you could write your game in plain text and it would make it. Make it. Oh, just like prompt it. That, that was a, that is an actual project that is in production funded and trucking along. Yeah where you can go as far as pick your programming language. And that makes sense. Like... It's all just models at that point. So that, yep. that doesn't surprise me. And people, of course, people are in, are in chat going, oh my God, that sounds terrible. That's gross. Where a mechanics prototyper in game dev is going, you just made my job about 50 times easier. I will be able to develop better and more game mechanics because I have access to a tool like that that lets me quickly and easily change edit and adjust ideas i have for my games yeah potentially so it's like yeah you're sitting there going oh that's gross that's bad that's terrible game devs love it <laughs> so it's like and, and the same goes for like being able to quickly prototype things and text things and change things and like it's it's there's there's a lot of usage for these tools that may not be overtly apparent to us as end users that that could mean that, you know could revolutionize in a lot of ways the way that this stuff is done yeah i found it interesting when um I, I forget who exactly it was but there was a a game developer that was talking about using ai for everything you just said and then they were talking about like the aspect of debugging ai code and how like that is going to be a whole thing that <laughs> well, you just make no, 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 no. Just use the AI debugger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just run the AI debugger. On, yeah. Mean? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> like, it's, why it's, not? You gotta have hey. like you gotta have like a few redundant systems. So a de debugger, debugger, and then a debugger, debugger, debugger behind oh, that. That's true. True. Yeah. And then it's and then it's like you know, hey, okay, I, I noticed you gave me that program, but I'm gonna need you to go ahead and debug it, and the AI just goes. I can't do that, Dave. <laughs> right, it starts. Then, then <laughs> the Ubisoft it's not narrative. A, it's not a bug, AI Dave. It's a feature, and I'm That's not right. fixing it. And it has small talk. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. Would you like it. some coffee first, Dave? How about you go make your favorite cup of brew before we start can, this yeah. debugging process? I, uh, I can wait. <laughs> I bought your AI uh, debugger system, and it's calling me Dave. It's not even getting my name right. <laughs> like this is terrible like the basic shit i fed into it it's not doing it right can i get a refund oh no sir that's normal your ai has adopted you and renamed you that's that's normal accurate. that's okay you're dave now so dave can i help you with anything else accurate <laughs> yeah well no i guess that was it okay you have a great day dave thanks for calling <laughs> Oh man, let's continue on with the news. Here's one that I know nothing about, but it's a really fun headline. Will Smith's zombie game <laughs> that no one has heard of, <laughs> which I don't, I didn't even know he was making a zombie game. Uh, it has bombed spectacularly, according the to Gotaku.com. Was that the thing none of us have heard of has failed, but Will Smith's there, so it's <laughs> so it's news. Yeah. It's called Undawn. Uh, it is a open world zombie survival shooter that launched in June, 2023 on mobile and PC. Um, it was a 10 cent game. Um, I think were the publishers Wait, behind it. It was out. Yeah. Which I didn't even know as well. It was June, 2023. Um, the oh, it's free on Will Steam. Smith was, is it? 
wait, 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 wait. He wait, wait. was a major role in the story. Yeah, I'm going to continue reading. Uh, the post-apocalyptic zombies shooter allegedly had more than 300 developers on it and a budget of nearly uh, 140 million USD. Unfortunately, according to Reuters via the research firm App Magic, the game has only managed to rake in $287,000 in revenue. That's about 0.2% of the game's alleged budget in a span of eight months. A hundred and forty million. <laughs> Meanwhile, over in Cyprus, the owl cat prez is like, F you will spend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. This is the trailer Did you for Did you for, for a fraction of that? You keep my games out of your god mouth! Uh, oh my god, yeah, dude. this looks pretty generic uh, that we're seeing here. So, yeah, that's... Uh, mm. Undone. Hey, it's out if you want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> so okay somebody just said something in chat that was pretty funny so like <laughs> larry and exit stage right <laughs> to go make their ip owl cat's like so i heard you need a bg4 <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey 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 wizards um <laughs> i mean so about, yeah. about that giant budget you got yeah. <laughs> 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 hey owl cat I think we can make this work. <laughs> Maybe. Why not? All right. Why? Why not? Uh, by the way, the, the Undone looks it's free on Steam. If you want to check, free. It out. Oh, it's yeah. It's, it's a mobile game. I think so it was a free to play, free. right? Yeah, 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 it's free to play. That makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, yeah. So that's that's a fun headline. Like I said, it's a fun headline. Um, of course, I bet. I bet uh, Will Smith was on a beach somewhere. You know, drinking a oh he probably and some guy came up some guy came up and was like hey will did you see the news that you know you're you're in the news for your game bombing and will was like i was okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm reading some of the reviews for this fucking game and they're 100%. fucking brilliant this game is free and still not worth the money <laughs> game's budget went into will smith's wallet we said that i think yeah. um it has Willard Smith as an NPC. He kills zombies who talk about his wife. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically the Golden Globes all over again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. whatever it was. I, uh, it was. I think it was the Oscars, right? Oh, nope, sure. Why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's. I hope his character can slap in that game. Me too. If not a DLC, you know, to, yeah. to buy the slap. Obviously, that'd be a huge money maker. That's where they fucked up. They could have just yeah. sold See, the if slap it was just if it was just a game of Will cents. Smith and the only thing you could do to zombies was slap them and you just walked around slapping zombies, I bet you would have sold better. Exactly. Exactly. I would have bought it. Yeah. Um I am reluctant to touch on this story because I don't know where it ended up. Um, but last Sunday at an Apex Legends event, uh during oh. the finals of the event. Um, there were two players that were basically hacked live um, and enabled cheats. And so it sparked a huge on stream, on stream yeah, live during the finals. And uh, they left the game slash, I think, maybe got kicked from the game. Um, it's all that happened. And then the next thing is, well, was this easy anti-cheat? And I think they put out a tweet saying, like, they put out a tweet when they hadn't put out a tweet since, I think, 2016, which was just a funny aside uh <laughs> was the first tweet of like eight years on their account um they put out a tweet saying like no it had nothing to do with us and then that's kind of where i stopped following the story and that was like monday or tuesday so i don't know what is going on like are people chat are people playing Here's apex legends like what do oh, you yeah. know what's going oh, yeah. on oh yeah um pirate software did a stream where they like really dived into this oh yeah into it and the the unfortunate reality here is that there's not really a, a good solution to this. People are being a bit more alarmist than they need to be. But the thing is, is if, if it was easy anti-cheat, it's like, cool, we can figure it out. We can patch it. That's great. If it wasn't easy anti-cheat, 
what happened? Yeah. <laughs> like that's 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 where it becomes a bit more of like, like what happened? How do we stop it? Do they know what happened? Are they like they aren't being public, I don't believe. So it's it's this really weird but what they have confirmed, what they have confirmed is that it was not a breach of the easy anti cheat. Okay. So the the thought now is that the the actual computers themselves were compromised in some way and that they used a general compromisation to then attack that behind the anti-cheat essentially because it was already in the system so that's i mean that's again that's the guess yeah uh, i don't and chat correct me if i'm wrong i don't think they've been public at all about the actual reasons i don't know if they're ever going to be yeah they might not ever be that's right yeah um so but it it, it was it was a very uncomfortable period of time because there was no question a period where everyone thought it was 100% the anti-cheat being hacked live. And more importantly, they thought the reason these people waited for the tournament was to show everyone the anti-cheat was not working properly. So they thought it was like, you know, a, a big middle finger to the industry kind of thing. But it turns out it looks like that, yeah, it may, it may be just computers getting hacked and yeah. I'm getting a little creative with it. Yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I, I forget which publication, but I think there was... I think the people that did oh. the hack also were in an interview as well. And so they were just having fun, quote unquote fun. So, yeah, I was, uh, Dailani in my chat just said that too. Apex said, uh, Apex spent a while fixing the bug with their game engine, not EAC. A, a guy admitted that he did it for fun and to get Apex to fix the bug. Huh. Okay. Sure. <laughs> That's the thing, I guess. Okay. Um, have you ever had pirate software in here? No, not yet. No, I think so no, I don't yeah. think we've really had an opportunity since he kind of blasted onto the scene. But we'd love to someday. In fact, we should figure out when his game's releasing. Yeah, and yeah, that's bring that's, him in for his big game release or a news thing about it for sure. Stuff. Yeah, love to talk to him about it. That'd be great. Uh, or maybe like he could do a, a a big stream where he actually talks to the guy that hacked Apex Legend, and then we could like bring. Oh wait, he did that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> next time next time thor we'll get him next, next time. time we'll we'll have next him time. on here uh, hey we be... can talk if if we have like bugs or robots that need to be killed he could help with that like he's been he's pretty good yeah. at killing the the bugs and the robots yeah what yeah. i've heard uh what oh, oh yeah no for the record i i know pirate software has been around for years i just meant he exploded recently right i would honestly want to talk to him from the creator point of view about like hey Thank talk you. to us about shorts because you're you made them blow your channel yeah. <laughs> huge how do we how do you replicate that yeah it'd be cool <laughs> how do we do how that? do we do that how does that <laughs> what, work do you for have me, like a book Thor? like or... let's let's have a conversation <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll probably go oh yeah i've got a short about that yeah you could just go oh, watch you, the show. Yep. <laughs> and then it's like damn it he got us again he got us shit he always finds a way yeah <sighs> Uh, Mark Merrill, a.k.a. Trendemir, the co-creator of League of Legends, put out a string of tweets talking about the MMO. And I have never been more excited for it. Essentially, they just were like, yeah, we recently rebooted the whole thing and uh, we're not trying to make, you know, an MMO with uh, the IP that we have. We're trying to evolve the entire MMO world, which is like, Great. Basically, we're not going to make a WoW clone. Yeah, we're not going to make a WoW clone. Yeah. We were making a WoW clone, but we don't want to make a WoW clone. Yeah. Uh, and then I said, we'll see you in about six years. <laughs> that's yep. the process Accurate. of uh, of how long that's going to take. I would assume all of this happened when Ghostcrawler <laughs> left the company a couple months back. Um, they introduced Babu Risu uh, as the new executive producer of the MMO. Um, he's worked at uh, Bioware, EA, as well as Riot. Um, recently, I think it was like a, I, they moved around, the, but the one very interesting thing about this is if this did happen a while ago, like, especially around the time that ghost was thinking about his thing. Now, now ghost has been public about his reasons for leaving, right? You know, family oriented things like that. And, and of course, whatever he said, that's what happened. That's what it is. It is interesting to think though, that. If this has been in, if this has been happening for a while, then Ghost left the what sounds like traditional project to start a non-traditional project with this current MMO, and then here we are, like later, the company going, yeah, we're gonna ditch that too. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. I'd love to know what happened inside that company because there, there are scenarios where like ghost was trying to get them to do this and they didn't. So he left. And then later they were like, yeah, he had the right idea. Like there's, there are, there are interesting things that could have played out given the course of events or none of them did, but I just mean the, the writing on the wall is a little interesting to read uh, in this situation. Yep. And we'll probably never know uh, unless there's like some full breakdown on it. But I mean, give it like 10 to 20 years. And after Ghost Semimo is successful, maybe he'll write a book or something. After he's a billionaire, he'll put out a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully so. Yeah. So I, I'm glad that they're going this direction. It's I'm sad, though, that, you know, it will be, they even say, uh, likely several years. They're going dark for likely several years. And so, and that just, and going dark for that time, then they'll probably have at least a year or two of like promotion and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, they're, they're essentially resetting the project. Yep. Um, which, you know, when it comes to making an MMO, I understand it takes long time, a ton of money. Oh, yeah. Um, and if you don't have an original idea, then yeah. Uh, it's a, MMOs are expensive, man. And they're like, incredibly you know, hard to do well, uh, and, and be successful at for sure. Yep. So, um, I suppose we'll see uh what else talking about mmos i guess okay. we could use this but oh you get somebody in chat said so much for ai speeding things up just for the record <laughs> the stuff that it the stuff that is going to speed up game Got dev em. via ai <laughs> is being made as we speak not here yet <laughs> so Slow down. <laughs> I like it's that. Gonna that take a little bit. That guy typed it. It was like, ah, got that. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, take oh, that. Yeah, that piece of got him. Woo. <laughs> Woo. They look good. It's gonna be a good Sunday. Uh, the promise of AI is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> You're all being fooled. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I, I don't know if you. I don't know if you've seen like. Uh, I think it's Cathalian's like opening animation where he's like, shing. Yes. Yes. And that's what it felt like to me. It's like, I'm going to comment and it's going to blow them away. That's correct. <laughs> that is correct. What actually happened. Yeah. 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 Uh, Final Fantasy 14, talking about MMOs, announced yesterday at a PAX panel. PAX East is going on this weekend. Uh, they, yeah. had a, they had a PAX panel there where they announced uh, June 28th. For early access with a full release on June 2nd. Um, what game is this for? For Dontrell, uh, for their new expansion. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Um, and the 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 big, I guess, the big story, the big uh, framework for this whole announcement is that when he announced it, he said that they were originally going to launch the week before that, but Elden Ring's DLC decided to come out. <laughs> so they pushed it back and he said, you have one week to play Elden Ring and then Don oh, Trail will nice. come out. So yeah. Uh, and he, he was very, uh, how considerate. Yeah. He's very, very apt to say like, I am not doing this for me personally at all, which he was very much doing this for him <laughs> to play Elden Ring DLC. Uh, cause he wants to play it himself, but yeah, that happened yesterday. Um, and then there was also final fantasy 16. Oh. oh, now. Okay. Bad news. That was a bad news comment. where did that come from? Nah, somebody asked if we were going to, uh, talk about the sweet baby ink stuff. Oh, I don't, I don't know enough about it to talk about it. And that is a, a whole can of worms. I don't think we should get into just cause I, I don't know enough about it. I don't like. I mean, it's it's about as close to politics and gaming as you can get. So I I I hate all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also I want to talk about. It. <laughs> can we very, not? Can we just not talk about it? Is that yeah, okay? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we move forward. We move forward. You can Google it if you want to. Um, what else? Oh, they uh, they had a Final Fantasy 16 panel as well. They talked about the DLC for that. It's coming out in uh, April 18th, I think. The, the second and final DLC, which will feature Leviathan and more story stuff. Um, I'm more curious, like, what happens at PAX East? That's, like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, what? In, in terms of what? What, I... What do you do there? No, I, I, I yeah, I guess. Like, I just, I... It's the what consumer, is, it's the consumer event. So, I mean, that's, that's where fans go. That's where gamers go. That's where, there's still I a lot of networking and done stuff there. In fact, a lot of people left GDC for PAX. Oh, they were just, okay. That makes sense. A lot sense. of promotion stuff. A lot of promotion stuff. Yeah. Um, it's like, 
like you don't go to GDC to really promote your product. You go to GDC to promote networking your product and finding employees and, and stuff like that. Then you go to PAX and you promote your product. Like that's where you find, you know, your PR connections, your, your fans, your players, that kind of thing. Yeah. Very okay. different audiences. Yeah. I, I, I hadn't been to one in eight, nine years, something like that. I just very, su not, not surprised. Cause I guess it'll always have a, a space, but I just knew that that was happening this weekend. I was like, Oh yeah. PAX is still a thing. Like, I wonder if it's still a massive, a massive thing, or if they're still chasing like the E3 aspect or if it's if they're going down the fan route i i don't know of any creators that went uh this year it kind of like they had the I, twitch I booth early on and so there was a, a reason for at least twitch streamers mm -hmm. to be there and nowadays like i don't know i don't know <laughs> what a creator would would go to do there um, there um there are a lot of creators that went there because they're sponsors Oh, to. and that they were doing uh, booth work. Yeah, yep. I saw I saw a lot of creators doing booth work at PAX. Okay. Um, some going there to stream games and meet with devs and things like that. I think cool. it's kind of standard. It's just not quite as again since Twitch basically gave up on it. I feel like a lot of the Twitch community did too. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I guess there's also two Twitch cons these years, uh, right? With with TwitchCon EU and, and mm -hmm. TwitchCon US, so they have spaces to go there, but. Um, I thought this was already completely canceled, but apparently not. Uh, two days ago via a, oh, it was Jason Schreier that broke, broke the story. Uh, Blizzard's decided to cancel all future Overwatch 2 PVE and focus on the competitive PVP experience going forward. Yeah, they definitely announced they were scaling back. Okay. The PVP or the single player last they, they talked, they had definitely not, they, they basically tried to soften the blow. I almost promise you at this point, they knew at the time they were going to delete it when they said that they were reducing it. And now just here we are and it's reduced or gone, whatever it is, but that's yeah. Ugh. Um, that's the, the mission sold so poorly that blizzard made mm. the decision to ax future PVE content and lay off the majority of the devs involved in the PVE missions. Furthermore, the poor sales resulted in the devs receiving 0% of the company's profit sharing bonuses this month. Good God. Uh, 0%. Upon release, the missions were met with mixed reviews. The PVE was a shell of the PVE experience that was promised when Overwatch 2 was first announced. Gone were the, quote, highly replayable hero mode missions and an upgradable talent tree. And instead, fans got something more akin to Overwatch's one's free archive missions. Um yeah so it's it's a that's that story's right there a little is exactly, bit of a rehash that's what like i feel in some ways granted he was talking about publishers but i feel like that's what that's what sven was talking about mm. like yeah. you have you know what it's ceos leaving the company with millions and you have people that are actually working on the game that they're being told to work on regardless if they want to or not or think it'll be a success they're the ones getting dicked by it yeah it's just like man that is yeah Ugh, god that is that is just so disgusting uh, that news was the chaser to this Overwatch 2 developer update, um, where the big news out of that is that they're no longer going to be locking new heroes behind the battle pass, um, with upcoming season 10. So they're going back to the over one watch or over one Overwatch one model where when a hero comes out, you're just able to play it. Um, in Overwatch 2, you either had to buy the battle pass or earn it from the battle pass that was free by getting to like a certain level if i recall cool. correctly they so, made a solution to their own problem yeah they created a problem but then <laughs> haha we've We're, solved it we've great. figured it out guys <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so that game just continues to kind of spiral in a lot of ways uh steam news at least I guess I, it's important to the audience. Steam families were announced. Oh, yeah. Uh, this Usually. is a, a really cool thing. Um, it's essentially like family sharing. Um, and <clears throat> it is, uh, you don't have to be on like the same network. You can share really wherever. Um, also, I think for families uh, that have uh, kids, you can uh, do different um, restrictions on when you can actually play it and all that type of stuff. Um, it's a pretty cool process. It is managed by, uh, in terms of what games are available through, um, the steam family, 
the developer has to have it basically uh, toggled. Um, they said in the FAQ. Oh, interesting. A game developer's uh, a game developer controls whether a game is eligible for sharing with Steam families. All developer settings for the previous Steam family sharing feature are being brought towards. Uh, sorry, forward to Steam families. So if a game is currently eligible for family sharing, it'll remain in the new system unless the developer chooses to opt out later. In addition, not all games can be shared due to technical limitations. For example, title that requires an additional third-party key account or subscription in order to play cannot be shared between accounts. We want as many games as possible to be accessible via family sharing, but we realize some games might have special cases where this feature isn't feasible or doesn't give users a good exper experience. Developers who have these concerns can reach out to us via the partner support page to help get uh, options and solutions. So, um, still, it, still a cool thing. Someone from my chat says you can't share with other with people from other countries. Yes, I believe oh. it is uh, region okay. locked as well. Let me find that okay. exact uh, thing. I remember reading that. Now I can't find it. Of okay. course, uh, but yes, I believe that's true. Um, <laughs> That's or, what chat was saying. For whatever that reason. Is generally right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, how many... Right and, 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 <laughs> I might have missed it if you said it, but how many family members can you have on this? Six. Okay, Why six. do you ask, Zeke? <laughs> because I I probably, in, in, in the 1% of the 1% of how many Steam games I own, and I, I could rent out my family positions <laughs> to some people I'd bet. <laughs> Anyone like, want to join? I would, me? I would not be surprised. Man, you want to play twenty six hundred Steam games? <laughs> oh uh, God! You're playing with fire, man. The yeah. last thing you want to do is lose that account. Just saying. Everyone knows Gabe <laughs> Newell sitting on his yacht would, right now, I'm watching the show. Hypothetically, I would never ever do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck with your account, <laughs> Zeke. Good luck with your account. I hope it all works out. Yeah. Um, creator news, at least Twitch stuff. Uh, we didn't talk about it last week. We'll talk about this. Week. Oh, watch parties are gone. Uh, leaving a family, leaving a steam family position locks both the lever and the slot of the person they left for one year. <laughs> so oh, they thought well, about that. Man, I know it's restaurants in fucking Los Angeles that have a year waiting list. So like, okay, well, what, what we're saying is on there quick. <laughs> what we're saying is, Zeke, you'll just have to charge per year. That's all we're saying. There you That's go. Yeah, charge up front. Okay. Take the money up front. If they leave, That's it's right. on them. You know, you got to yep. you got to Z pass. pass. 99.99 for one full year. But that's it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. Uh, anyways, watch parties are gone uh, in the middle of April. Or wait, no, the beginning of April, uh, like a week before the Fallout release, which funny enough. I think Co made the joke on Twitter. Uh, so many creators are planning on uh, doing, we're planning on doing different watch parties for um, the Fallout Amazon Been show. Been literally waiting years for this. Yeah. Years. And it's like, they pull this, sh oh my God, dude. Yeah. Infuriating. Uh, they're gone. Uh, citing not uh, enough creators use them and they don't want to support it anymore. And then they said like, uh, I remember the final the like final comment is that the resources for watch party were going to be utilized elsewhere. What fucking yeah. resources are you utilizing? Resources are money <laughs> and the utilization elsewhere is people's pockets. Like what, <laughs> I, what kind of, what kind of uh, asinine yeah. comment is that? Yeah, that was really uh, like, it's, it's like, if that wasn't there, it's like, well, we're just going to take all the resources we were going to use for that, put them in the dumpster outside and just burn them. Yeah. Is that what we're supposed to do? Is that? That's, oh, no, uh, we're supposed to tell them we're going to use them? Oh. It was a weird thing. Uh, it, to play somewhat of a devil's advocate, very also, few people uh, used watch parties. But Dan, Dan Clancy said on somebody's stream that this was done by Amazon, not Twitch. Oh, okay. I mean, that makes sense to me. It, I, it does completely. It, it does. I assumed it was Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it I doesn't it necessarily make it better or worse, but like. Oh, someone in chat said uh, mentioned it was because of the ad support in the show. Got it. Well, so it's what everyone suspected. It's what everyone. Amazon's suspected. probable switch to like, you know, everything has ads on Amazon now. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless you pay for that premium 
bullshit, whatever it is. That makes sense. So they didn't want Twitch Prime to bypass Amazon new ad system. The the like freemium system that they're launching, which comes out I right before Fallout. Okay. That, I, I'm that's... absolutely stopped watching Amazon shit because that because like fucking ads, man. Like, oh yeah, I mean, they uh... they hid that shit, dude. They, like they used to have free with Prime. That button went away a while ago. I, mean, I was like, where did my button go? I love that button. If, where did my button go? And now it's like freebie TV with ads. I'm like, no. It's on everything, no! man. It's on Hulu already. <laughs> it's coming to Netflix. Like that's that's where we're headed. That's where all these platforms are doing. Uh, they're they're all gonna charge for the freemium stuff. Um, with that freemium's not yeah. the term at all, but they're all gonna charge for the different tiered platforms. 1099 or 999 for like the the introductory platform and then pay an extra two bucks to skip those ads so yeah yep that's where and then well back to cable well uh, yeah for some people <laughs> let's uh, not go crazy here <laughs> no one's talking about going back to cable for some people they're gonna you know get a boat start sailing <laughs> so now we just need bethesda to go ahead and figure out how to let us stream Fallout on Twitch. So if you could just go ahead and talk to Amazon, we would really appreciate it. God, yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, another thing Twitch has done via... What are, what are you doing? Oh, do we have a guest? Right, I had a little kid just show up. Yeah. Oh, you got a guest. That's fine. Uh, Zach okay, Busey... I'm gonna go, yeah, go I'm ahead. Go help him. I'll be right back. Go ahead. Uh, Zach Busey Ooh. tweeted a new thing called... Uh, I don't think there's a name for this, but I guess it's an evolution of the Twitch sponsorship uh, campaign. That guy right there is in charge of the sponsorship campaigns. That kid, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Asher, slow. Asher, who's that right there? Oh, he's recognizes Zeke. So who's that right there? Remember him? Not me. I'll turn my camera. Let's make it easy. Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> he called me That's big Zeke. guy. That's right. That's it's big guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, big guy. That's what he called me all the time. Where'd big guy go? Oh, big guy. Yeah. Uh, this will now pop up in your followed channels section. Let me, uh, here we go. I think I sized this properly. So if a stream is sponsored via a Twitch sponsorship campaign, uh, in your followed channel sidebar, uh, which will take up three spaces, and ignores viewership sorting rules. Um, it's a brand new ad format, which will generate tons of impressions for the sponsoring brand, says Zach BC on Twitter, who's not a Twitch uh, representative or employee or anything. Um, but even if the person followers don't click into the stream, um, this is still a way for them to, you know, get impressions of the sponsoring brand. Um, he says that it's, uh, you know, Twitch just continuing to add more ad formats wherever they can, but yeah. And I realize that this is this is gross for viewers, but for streamers who do sponsored shit, it's very nice. Well, and the reason why it's nice is because the more eyes you get on a sponsored stream, the more times you're gonna like the, the more opportunities you get to do sponsored streams. I agree hundred percent. I will follow up and say at the moment it's only for Twitch sponsorship, so like Twitch sure, sanctioned sure. campaigns. Uh, I would suspect that Twitch will not allow for creators to have uh, this level of access. And so it'll remain a Twitch activation only. So everything you just said is kind of nullified, <laughs> which sucks. Cause I agree with you hundred percent. Everything you said, I'm on board. I just don't think Twitch will allow. No, well, no, for no them I'm just saying occur. like, even if, if, if you get sponsored for Twitch, sponsored by Twitch and then third party non Twitch sees that you did well with your twitch sponsorship stream yeah i mean it could have an effect maybe yeah maybe yeah. um oh <laughs> yeah i i think we'll just see i think we'll see a lot of these um and it's somewhat of an annoyance it it's kind of a lot i mean it takes up three l things on the followed list it's kind of crazy uh, and it also pushes it to the top so it's pretty strong advertising, but hey, it's Twitch's platform, so they can do that, I suppose. Yep. Um, at the end of the day, there's there's not much, you know, 
I would love it, Zeke, if they were uh, to give that to anyone wanting to do sponsored streams. Because you're 100 percent correct. For an yeah. an advertiser looking at this, they're like, "Oh yeah, well, how much how much is that thrown into the whole like activation? What does that cost?" Um, and that yeah, it's it's more money for Twitch. It's more yeah. money in their pocket. But also, yeah. like if they see like you getting <clears throat> sponsored at all, that means you are a sponsorable commodity. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, uh, I don't know if this is fully live yet. And also those Twitch activations, uh, Twitch sanctioned activations are kind of sporadic. They're not always constantly running. Um, you'll probably see some, I would suspect for, uh, the fallout show. Um, if they're, if, if history is anything to go by. Well, or if maybe they don't want to draw to atten attention to the. Amazon Prime stuff. What do you mean? Oh, oh, the the like maybe they wouldn't want to do a bunch of advertising on Twitch to bring attention to the fact that they dropped watch parties right before <laughs> everything I mean, happened with Fallout. Yeah, I would be very surprised if the majority of Twitch people, Twitch viewers, uh, outside of like our spheres, even know what the fuck a watch party is. <laughs> That's true. And to be fair, not like a huge amount of people used them. Yeah, yeah. I like mean, if if you go to the the big uh, the big folk mm. right now, their audience is, is like, what the hell's a watch party? Yeah. I, I came from TikTok. What is <laughs> what is going on here? What's mm -hmm. Twitch? So, uh, I wanted to watch Co with, Fallout with Co. I wanted to watch with you guys. I, I was so excited to watch Fallout with you guys. Tons I, of creators I, like, I had, do that. Oh, yeah. We, had, we were making plans, man. We were making plans. Yeah. Had a very cool event lined up for it, but nope. no more. Uh, nope. Um, Bellatro crossed 1 million copies sold. Congrats Game to them. Actual cocaine. Yeah. You were playing on the, the flight, right? Was that your first uh, experience with it? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, my first Bellatro experience was on the flight. Yeah. And uh, oh my God, that game is very addicting. Yeah. I did I, I was I did get to a point where I was just done with it, though. I played it for like six or seven hours. And I got to a point where I just kind of was like, you know what? I'm done. I get in. I did, the, the one thing about Bellatro that that didn't really grab me was the fact that there's like no real story of any kind. It's just it's a hundred percent game mechanics. The, the game mechanics are great, and I love them. But the progression yeah. was just like it felt very uh, same meaningless. Yeah, just samey. Like there was I didn't I didn't I lost that feeling of like uncovering something or get. It. I, I lost the carrot on a stick. Basically. Ah. But it was still fun. It kept my interest yeah. for seven hours. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's it's a it's a great little time waster. It's it's a um I say time waster because it's like you're not moving towards anything really. You're just trying to beat levels over and over again. Yeah. It's like some people like those those uh I remember when my mom was trying to quit gambling, she had like those pocket poker, pocket casino things. <laughs> you know? Like yeah. pocket poker, pocket kino, like, oh, I can't play like this. And it's just like after a while she was just like well, there's no stakes so i got like what am i doing yeah, and sure. that's kind of like that's like it's a greatly it's a very well constructed game and it's a very fun game but it's like you know I'll, I'll i'll put it on for a hand or two and then you know like win or lose i'll shut it off for a while makes sense yeah makes sense um Small little tidbits. Liza P crossed 7 million uh, players worldwide. So that's not necessarily sold. I think a lot of that is Game Pass. Because um, I'm pretty sure that game is on Game Pass. But still, 7 million uh, for a first IP, first go to an IP like that uh, is great. Uh, Want to play more of it. So congrats to them. Um, Sony is reportedly paused PlayStation VR 2 production to quote, clear backlog of unsold units. So it didn't really take off, um, is, is kind of what you can read from that. Um, they are no longer, for now, they have paused uh, the, the creation <clears throat> of those uh, headsets. Hopefully, it, I would suspect they're probably hoping that it, it picks up when they uh, get the, the PC um, access to the The, the whole VR2. situation with them is so strange. Because, like, they clearly care enough to put millions and millions of dollars into the development of the VR headsets, into their production, and all this stuff. Yet, they refuse to make, like, a really good VR game. Like, they refuse yeah. to make, like, a flagship title. 
and then they and then all of a sudden the headsets don't do well and it's like oh well guess everyone hates vr it's like no you didn't give us anything fun to do on it like there's there's not a single game that anyone has told me i have to play on psvr2 i heard the horizon thing is kind of cool same but like you know that half-life alex completely changed the game and it was so far ahead of its time because we have not seen a game that as good as that since and it's like if we had gotten 10 of those 20 of those we'd all be wearing vr headsets right now <laughs> you know it's like damn but they just it's so unfortunate man and it's so weird they just throw away money like this yeah yeah like either I, get into vr either do it or don't do it just right they they yeah. like and feel like they they pushed that the vr2 thing and they're like people are gonna buy it. they're gonna love this and then no one bought it because there's no games. And they're just like, why is no one buying this? We have this headset. I don't get it. <laughs> it doesn't make uh, sense. Somebody chat says, did you hear much talk of VR GDC? Almost none. Really? No, almost none. It was but, all about AI and all that kind of stuff, but not VR. A follow-up. There, there was a little talk of the Apple VR thing, but it was yeah, all Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. How many people that. did you see wearing the Apple headset? in san francisco wearing yeah like wearing and walking around because they, they do exist okay you got to go to the I tenderloin see, i that. did not see i did not see <laughs> don't go on the single, tenderloin man i did not see a single person at gdc wearing an apple vr headset in the pub in public okay. like at any of the events or anything like that not a yeah. single person every once in a while you'll they, see the no, tweets no, and there stuff, were, but... but they got bullied and put in lockers i bet <laughs> The game what devs, the or maybe their maybe their headsets got Apple ripped off their head, head and they ran him. They ran into the. Uh, they probably ripped the headset off and ran to the tenderloin. It's it true, hundred <laughs> percent. Now they're out there pooping in it because they think it's a toilet. That's right. Oh my god! What else could it be? No, I can Terrible. look at my stocks while I poop. <laughs> mm. Sorry, I have the mental image of someone just taking a shit on a sidewalk wearing an Apple VR headset. <laughs> <Like, laughs> Aluminum can futures are looking bright. <laughs> He's sitting there without pants and he has to hold the battery because he doesn't have any pockets. <laughs> <laughs> He's just doing... <laughs> Oh, God, that's funny. That just got worse and worse that's just, and worse. That's just comedy, worse. baby. You can't... Uh... <laughs> That's really good. Somebody said Apple bidets coming soon. Uh, full circle. We've come full circle. They're gonna reinvent the hose. Uh, they sync enough. with your Apple headset. Oh, now we're talking. Now I'll buy the headset. Yeah, now we're talking. There we go. That that uh, takes water sports to a whole new, you know, whole new level. It's exciting. All you gotta do to spray a behold, just blink twice. Yeah. Uh, speaking of VR headsets. Oh God, I just thought. Of <laughs> Introducing the Apple Bidet, sponsored by Power Wash Simulator. <laughs> they call it the iButt. Yeah. No. This is all great. This is no. all going to make so much money when someone actually does this. <laughs> they should really do it. But oh, me, Siri. No. Nope. You shouldn't say it. Don't say that out loud, Siri. Don't ever listen. say that again, please. Siri's always Thank listening, you. newbie. You can't just say that. Uh, hey, the... Siri, clean my backside. <laughs> no. Do it yourself. Oh my God. What has become of me? That's the Ubisoft narrative thing. That's why they're, they're going to utilize it. Wow. They have questions and I want, comments about it. I want it. to pass butter now. <laughs> I, uh, I think I chat, chat is slowly catching on to my Power Wash Simulator thing where they're like, wait, would it have a camera? It's like you're starting, you're starting to get the joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> Quest 2 uh, has had its price drop speaking of vr headsets down to 200 dollars, which is uh that's that's like one of the that's not bad standalone vr headset like pretty good power to it that it, uh it's getting cheaper so which, which one the quest 2 so it's not like their their primo oh. thing the quest 3 um i think that's still 500 but the quest 2 is like still fine like it's still a pretty decent uh power headset uh which is cool that it's getting cheaper. Uh, hopefully that means that all those prices are going to continue to kind of go down. Um, Cause that's really the only way that, that VR will ever succeed is when the price of entry uh, gets low enough. So now is now uh, uh, refresh me quest Two. do they use 
only pri- uh, proprietary games that are like released on its thing or do you use it to play things on like steam and stuff there is a it's actually not even a uh like a wink and a nod you can play steam games on it anymore you can just straight up download the steam app on quest and it'll oh, okay. just like okay, cool. pull games from your steam account yeah okay um you used to have like a uh you used to have to quote unquote side load it um which was not like a hundred percent legal is a weird word, I guess for that, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not the, the easiest way. Let's go frowned with upon. Yeah. Frowned yeah. upon. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> um, but now it's all like built into it and, and it works very well. Um, as long as you have fast enough, like uh, local uh, wireless, it, it could pull that stuff pretty, pretty easily. Um, and look pretty good. I think the screen on the, the uh, quest two is also decent. Uh, quest three is obviously better but yeah uh i think that's kind of it in terms of most news uh we can get into the are we gonna even like mention dragon's dogma well yeah we're gonna talk about it uh and i think it's impossible okay. not to uh not Be to better. discuss the uh the monetization of dragon's dogma that's, oh, too that's when talking about it i didn't yeah. mean the game i meant like just the news aspect leading into the game yeah i mean it, it kind uh. of uh you gotta they come hand in hand. Also, Zeke, okay, it's gonna cost you one ninety nine. Uh, oh, so can I begins. just send you my PayPal and information? So it begins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, is there, that's is right. There, a there, convenience was, fee? there was uh chat did bring up there's POE news, but uh, we don't gotta get into it because even I was shocked at how much stuff there is <laughs> next week's leak. I didn't see any of it. I was hoping you go over it. And, uh, <sighs> It, it, there's a lot <laughs> there's go so, on uh, it, it's all like uh there's tier 17 maps now uh there's uh there's a new uber boss uh they are doing a bunch of quality like a ton of quality of life stuff and then the league mechanic is like a ton of different leagues kind of all smashed into one uh it, in a good okay. way um, it seems like it's going to be cool. a good, yeah, it seems it should be a good league. Uh, there's three Atlas trees now instead of just one that you can kind of swap between at the end game. Cool. Um, and then the other, yeah, I guess the, the bigger news story for kind of the greater uh, gaming population, they pushed PoE2 back. Um, it's, yeah. It's no All longer right. coming out uh, in beta in June. Um, it'll be kind of like a, an alpha, closed alpha type deal. And they're pushing it back to sometime later this year. Um, So for most people, I think, that are watching, uh, apart from people that are already kind of, you know, all in on Path of Exile 2 and already know all the announcements, uh, they're all waiting for Path of Exile 2 um, to come out. And it just got pushed back even further. So we will see uh, what comes from that. Um, Hopefully sooner than later. I don't. I'm curious how much like uh, how much people will wait <laughs> for that game. Uh, they're kind of playing with a a fine line there. I guess there's not really anything pulling them away, right? Like Diablo Four kind of did what Diablo Four did, and uh, Last Epoch was good, um, but I think most people have already dipped out of Last Epoch, so they're kind of just waiting. Uh, yeah, there's not really like any big bosses it's not like the there's not like a poe develop end game yet but i think yeah. a lot of people are kind of like me where it's like we played last epoch we loved it and now we're like waiting for reasons to make characters and do stuff again totally yeah yeah, yeah. um anyways dragon's dogma uh that game came out and is out and aside from all of the micro <laughs> transaction stuff which we're gonna get into uh it's great I, I think me and Co are both having a fantastic fucking time with it. Um, it's, Absolutely I'm, loving it. I've put 30 hours into it so far, and I'm, it's very much like, for me, it's it's Skyrim. I don't give a shit about any of the story. <laughs> I'm just walking around, finding things, killing things, exploring, finding caves, finding different loot in the caves, and having a blast. Um, we can kind of dive into the the gameplay aspect of it. And just a little bit, because I think the mind, the the micro transaction stuff dominated the news space uh, for the past seventy two hours. It seems to be dying down, though. Like, basically, the gist of it is, Dragon's Dogma two came out. 
And when it launched, uh, alongside of that were a whole slew of microtransactions. Um, those microtransactions were in a document uh, that was also sent to people that reviewed it, but I think it was also tied to spoilers for the game in kind of the same document. So a lot of reviewers said they didn't look at it or they didn't feel the need to, to comment on it or anything like that. And so that came out uh, and it, the internet lost its fucking mind. Um, it debuted to mostly negative on Steam. Um, I don't know where it's currently sitting. Let's see. Uh, currently sitting mixed. So it has gone up a little bit. 50% uh, of the 32,000 user reviews for the game are positive. Um, and alongside kind of all of the microtransaction news, there was a ton of misinformation on exactly what was purchasable and how it would all like factor into the game and, and what in the game is earnable that you can buy and how easy is it to earn all that stuff. And so the more that that information is kind of permeating the gamer sphere of news, um, I think more and more people are, are able to move past it. That being said, it's the same conversation we've had on this very show for a decade at this point. <laughs> like you can go back and watch our show uh, on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I think it was, when they debuted the fact that you could like buy levels in that game. Uh, and like the three of us had a very long um, and I, I would, I remember it as a, a very uh, argumentative conversation around it. Um, but nothing's changed since then. It's the same fucking conversation. It, it's, and that's, I don't want to downplay the fact that like, you know, MTX and, and the perceived notion that they're taking things away from the game, the potentially, they, there's the idea that they could take things away from the game and charge for it. You just never know type deal. But like, all of this stuff is the same rehashed shit <laughs> from so many years ago. So already from the very get go, I was already just like, yeah, I don't care. Like I'm already moved past it. Uh, which is maybe not the best approach to it at the end of the day, but I was so like mentally taxed out of it that I just didn't even talk about it at all. Uh, Ko, you had a rather lengthy post, I think on Twitter um, that I saw kind of went viral. Um, rip your mentions on that. I'm sure it had like 2 million or so views on Twitter. Um, but nothing new was said. It was the same thing you've kind of always reiterated for. I mean, literally, it's, it's kind of funny because that tweet, I basically said like, God, eight years ago yeah. on this show about mankind divided. Like, right. That was one yeah. of the first like egregious things. And the thing that, un unfortunately, here's here was my biggest issue. You know, I thought maybe if I gave it one more try, it would work. And I thought, let me try to put up a nuanced tweet <laughs> that isn't black and white. And I'm sure this time, this time, Twitter will get it. Man. This time. And the thing is, is what a lot of people didn't understand is that this game came out and immediately sunk to mostly negative on Steam. It is clear, clear, there is a public perception issue on microtransactions in single player games. That is clear. That is what the tweet was about. The tweet was about why, when a game like Dragon's Dama comes out with a thing of DLC, why gamers get so angry. Like that's, you know, like that's, that's why, that's why one of the, one of the many reasons outside of, you know, the obvious ones like greed and stuff like that. Now, unfortunately, what a lot of people took my tweet as is they didn't take my tweet as talking about the review score of Dragon's Dogma on Steam. They took it at me bashing Dragon Dogma's two monetization. <laughs> so then I was like, no, it's not what this is. So I put a tweet up going, yo, look, here's the thing. Dragon's Dogma 2 monetization is actually pretty benign. Like I played Dragon's Dogma 1. I'm 
15 plus hours into Dragon's Dogma 2. I haven't bought a single DLC item. It feels similar. Not a big not a big deal for DD2. And then I put in the other in the second tweet as well, like the whole point of the first tweet was about Steam, about the public's perception, about how hopefully devs are, you know, paying attention to this so we can stop seeing this cycle just continue of games coming out and getting review bombed because of poor MTX practices, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then everyone was like, why are you putting up a tweet backtracking the first one? And I'm like, no, that's not, you're not. <laughs> well, well, just as, a, just as an experiment, Co, I just put out a tweet that says microtransactions bad, exclamation point. And I'm just going to see. You're going to see how it's not that, nuanced. Well, now it's the problem. Nuanced and, and no, but here's I just the thing. want to see like how many likes now, I get. What I was talking about is an issue that I was having with a tweet. But what's interesting is the issue I'm having with my tweet is the exact issue that's going on with all of Dragon's Dogma 2 right now. And what that issue is, is there is a large vocal, I don't even want to call them a minority, because frankly, I don't even know if it's a minority anymore. There's a large vocal percentage of gamers that hate single player microtransactions. They hate them. They will not play a game that has single, regardless of the reason, they exist. And those people are having this discussion about microtransactions in single player games. And then there's this other discussion. There's a secondary discussion of monetization Dragon's Dogma 2. And the problem <laughs> is that these people are arguing with these people and they're not even arguing about the same thing. Yeah. But because it's kind of in the same realm, they're yelling at each other. So that's, that's what we're seeing on Twitter right now is we have these like, I don't, I'm not gonna call them fanboys because people defending Dragon's Dogma 2 are not fanboys. Because the monetization in Dragon's Dogma 2 is not that bad. It's, it's like, it's not great. And yes, if you do buy it, it will dramatically affect it, the first 10 hours of your game because you'll be able to warp around and stuff. And, you know, like, like there, there are things that will dramatically affect how your game is played. But none of it is needed. And the game gives you every single thing. In fact, what I've been telling my stream is not only do you not need to buy the DLC, but if you do, then it could screw up the base game's progression of power and QOL, and it, it will mess up your game if you buy the DLC potentially, and then use the items you get from it. Because yeah. it throws off how Dragon's Dogma feels. Like one of the beautiful things about Dragon's Dogma is the fact that it's so hard to get around. And when you get access to these stones, it's like a huge deal. And you only get a few of them. Like it, it's, it's, you know, like that's part of the charm of the game. So, like it's, well, it's, I mean, it's just, the if I may, if I may, let me just list off some stuff that are available. There's the master vacation bundle, assorted outfit bundle, special job set, job leveling set, Yakuza CD collection. Oh shit, I'm reading the wrong game. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, that's a whole different discussion. Oh See, fuck, nice that's try. infinite wealth. I'm on the that's wrong infinite page. Wealth. I'm sorry. I'm Absolutely. Sorry. Microtransactions bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> That's a whole nother now. Now do we facet. need to talk about this? Like, yeah. what are you doing, Zeke? Like, yeah. that's a whole different <laughs> shit storm to talk about. But anyway, here's here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. If you buy the microtransactions, they will affect your game. You don't need to, but there is a large percentage of gamers that are never going to be okay with the fact that you can, and that's never going to change. That's never going to change. Yeah. So like until these, and so people are like, was the review bombing on steam justified? And it's, it's interesting because on one hand, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody that hate, I hate boycotts. I hate canceling. I hate all that stuff. I think, I think it's lame. I think people are deeper than binary on offs. That being said, the idea that you would tell a group of people do not express your opinion at the people that you are buying things from. Do not express your negative opinion to them in any way that you can. Like that just seems wrong. You know, like, like how else are these people supposed to tell Capcom, we are not okay with this. Like it, it, there, there's, there, there, the tools are limited. I mean, yeah, sure. You can not buy the game, but so can everyone who doesn't play video games. That yeah. doesn't help. Yeah. So it's like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, sure. Boycotts work, but they work under certain conditions, but in this condition, it, it's not really going to do it. So it's like in a situation like this, you say it's review, like people have told me, what do you think of the review bomb of Dragon's Dogma? It's like, I don't, I don't even know if I'd call it review bombing because 
they all have a deep-seated reason they feel this way. They are all individual people. It's not like one person is making 10,000 accounts just to screw the company. You know, like, there's, this is a very serious issue that I feel like gamers are starting to get really frustrated with. And, and even in a situation like Dragon's Dogma, when the monetization isn't that bad, the company is getting all the flack for if they had a horrible monetization that did affect gameplay, you know? And it's like, this is gonna keep happening. This is gonna keep happening. People say, why didn't this happen in Yakuza Like a Dragon? It did. We just There's weren't, like scale. some of us weren't listening. It just was yeah. more small scale. So it's <clears> like, this always happens. Um, but anyway, I have just said about 20 different things that people could very easily disagree on. So before all of our chats get destroyed, I'll just stop right there. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's... again, this, this, this whole situation is, is very tumultuous and there's not really a right way or right answer to do it. And it plays with a lot of, a lot of interesting discussions that don't involve gaming and are more just like, how do you deal with a situation like this in any situation, like not just games. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it, but no, the short of it is I, I think. I think everyone is in their right telling Capcom what they want and don't want from games they buy from them. Yeah. And if they do that via Steam review, I think that's fine. Um, I think I think there's some, like I read through a lot of the Steam reviews. There are some really well-written reviews. Really, like obviously people put a lot of time into this to be like, I am not buying your game, not because I don't want to play it, but because I disagree with what you are doing with your monetization. And here's why. And they'll put like five paragraphs detailing exactly why that feel that way. And it's like, that's, you know, that's, I mean, that's valid, man. It's valid. Yeah. hundred percent valid. Yeah. And I, the other thing too, is a lot of those reviews also, the majority of them are MTX related, but a lot of them are also performance. And performance. Related. Yeah. yeah. Performance is a, a big, um, uh, issue at the moment. Um, kind of across the board. If you're not running a tip top CPU, uh, the game, and even if you are, the game can kind of still have a, a struggle, um, when it comes to cities where your fps will just straight up drop um, oh so one thing i will say um and and honestly i'm just gonna just say this unacceptable completely unacceptable the performance uh capcom you're a huge company you've been working on this for years the fact that you didn't have a valid proper way to erase your new player data and start over no, this is like this, no, sure, no. I'm laughing already. because it happened to me. I haven't told the story, <laughs> dude. This that that is that is and and here's the worst part. Here's the worst part. Read their response. Okay, we are looking at adding a fe feature to the Steam version of the game that will allow players that are already playing to restart the game. Okay, listen to those three words again. We are looking, so it might not happen. Yeah. Adding, like it's not missing. It's not missing. They're adding it. It's not like they're, you know, and then, and then feature. Apparently it is now a feature to be able to restart your game. So let me tell you, uh, when, <laughs> like, so, Wednesday oh, evening. Story time with Uncle JP. I love this part. <laughs> Wednesday evening. I had had access to Dragon's Togma 2 for about a week. I had run around in game for about an hour just to see how performance is. And, you know, I could kind of check it out, see if I was going to need to do anything for the game, blah, blah, blah. I had already spent multiple hours on stream creating my characters, which were, uh, you know, saved on the cloud slash on the local PC itself. It was great. I was super excited the next day. It's about... 11 o'clock, I start winding down. And it's like, oh yeah, I, let me reread the, the embargo to make sure everything's good, so I'm good to play it tomorrow. I'm rereading it and there's a big thing that says like, please do not use a character from uh, any non-new game file. Is I, That's a poorly worded way to say it. I don't, yeah. I don't remember the exact basically, thing. Basically, make sure to restart your playthrough start from the a very new game. beginning. Yeah, start that a new game. That was an game. embargo line. Oh, okay, yeah, I need to, uh, I need to start a new game. Start up the game. Wait a minute. How do I? I'm kind of looking around. I'm going looking to all the, the options, options for I'm, the reset data. Yep. yep and I'm and like, mm -hmm. how the how the fuck do I do this? And so I'm thinking, like, well, it's it's midnight Eastern. There's no way in hell I'm going to get a response via email on how to do this. And I saw someone tweet uh, that I had worked with prior, another creator. And so I message her and, and say, hey, by chance, do you know how to <laughs> make a new character? 
And she goes, dude, I just did this thing earlier today. It sucks, and I'm sorry. And I go, oh, God, what do I have to do? She goes, hold on. I'm going to go to my other Twitter DM, and I'm going to copy and paste this entire thing on what you need to do. So I'm kind of like, okay, how bad is this going to be? She sends me <clears throat> basically a, a little quick tutorial that in order to make a new game, start a new game, start a new character, or use my old character data and start anything, I have to go into the game files, into a hidden file under app roaming, like app data roaming, if people, people are aware of that, if you know what that is, delete oh, yeah. a bunch of local files on my PC, go to Steam, turn off cloud data, boot the game, remake my characters from scratch because that's what I just deleted and then I will be able to start the new game. And that is how you make a new character slash start a new game in Dragon's Dogma 2, still and, to this oh, day. Oh, oh, you want to hear the best oh part? You want to hear the best part? So if you Ugh. do that out of order, or if you do it too many times, the anti-cheat can pick it up yep. and will lock your account for 24 hours. Yep. So you can only do it a handful of times or DeNuvo or DeNovo or whatever will be like. It'll think you're trying to copy, it'll make a uh, copy, make extra copies. Yep. <laughs> and so, okay. So, no, okay. Everything, everything JP just said, everything JP just said, all that stuff. And then keep in mind on top of this, this is a game where it is exceptionally easy to miss quests to yeah. lose out on major, major sides of the game. So obviously you'd want to be able to restart this game. Um, like obviously you'd, you'd have to be able to, right? So yeah. And then, and then all of that being said, right? What a ridiculous situation. Can't believe this happened. Who would possibly release a game in this state? And then they drop that sentence. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Okay, we are you looking question, at okay. adding a feature. Before I forget, this is, a, this is an honest question. Like, why is there anti-cheat in a single-player game? Because it has, it's a multiplayer game. Yeah, it's, it's online. It's, 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 it's an online game. Like, all the other okay. pawns that you can use are other players. They don't want people hacking and cheating on pawns and then releasing them out to the wild to spoil other games. Like, it, okay. if it didn't have social elements, I can almost guarantee we wouldn't see the anti-cheat. But they're, they're, the social pawn thing is actually a huge part of the game. Uh, pretty much, like, okay. every few levels you can get like other people's pawns so if those if there was hacking going rampant in the game like it would be a mess yeah it'd be an absolute mess. DRM also, not clearly, real okay. quick real quick also clearly because of the denuvo stuff we just talked about it's more of copies yeah so i, I think it's more they don't want people you know sure at this point with especially the bad pr they need every sale they can get Oh, and it, let's be 100% honest. It's selling quite well. It hit all-time records on Steam. It's, it's got crazy. like 230, 240,000 people playing it. And this is a cyberpunk situation. 100%. 100% cyberpunk situation. Where it's like, your game is selling well. Yeah. With horrible PR. Without a new game plus. With a mostly negative slash mixed Steam review. Think of how well this game would be selling if we were actually talking about how good the game was and not about how much Capcom effed up with new game plus with the <laughs> yeah. PR with the monetization, like this game could have been like a million plus giant, amazing. This game is one of the best RPGs of all time. And now well, instead it's just a massive PR tornado they have to deal with. Yeah. Good job. I I'll hope tell that you this. extra 200,000 from your MTX is worked out. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, like, like MTX is aside, like if my honest opinion about them is, eh. Um, uh. But the thing that, that I was like, I was looking for a new game to play, like in my spare time. And I was like, oh, Dragon's Dogma 2. And then I, I, I saw the performance issues and I was like, ooh, I don't have a top, top of the line PC. It's good, but it's not top any top, right? So I'm like, eh, I'm not sure if it'll affect me. But then I saw the save fucking thing. Like, you can't start like the new game shit. And I was like, there's no, I'm, that just solidified. I'm not buying this fucking piece of shit. <laughs> until all of that shit is resolved yeah it's already been modded by well, the way here's, and here's the thing uh, if you want to do new game stuff the monetization is never going to change in this game it's never going to change 
And that's because the monetization in this game is standard Capcom monetization. That's actually been an argument for right. it by people that don't care about the monetization. You look at Resident Evil, you look at a lot of Sega stuff, like you were just talking about. Like this is becoming industry standard in a lot of ways. And what they're doing is they're releasing two different versions, which is normal, right? You got your normal version and you got your deluxe edition. And then what they do is they take everything you can get in the deluxe edition and they piecemeal it out into 10 different DLC things that you can buy individually. And what that's doing is that's kind of the foot in the door at basically being able to just monetize whatever you want in the game. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because every time I feel like something kind of bad happens in terms of the monetization debate, and, and I'm like, yeah, you know, here we are. It's getting worse. And you always have this people, oh, it's always been this bad. It's not getting worse. It's always been this bad. And it's like, man, I really like, I don't know. I just, I, I, I feel, I feel like it's, I feel like not only is the monetization itself getting worse, but the conversation around it is getting louder. That's the big thing. I feel like the well, conversation that's definitely is true. louder. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. And, and that's also a bigger deal because now social media is uh, algorithmically on purpose making that conversation louder. <laughs> right? Yeah, not wrong. Like it, it, wrong. it, it's uh, that's a that's another facet of kind of all of yep. this. Um, but the worst part, man, the worst part, the worst part is we should be talking about how awesome this game is because yeah. this game is awesome. I agree. And it kind of drives me freaking crazy that we're having to address this. I, I know you're dealing with this streaming at JP, like every half an hour. Yeah. You know, somebody drops in talking about the monetization and then end, we end up talking about it. And then it just, you know, and it's just like, man, I'd love to just enjoy this goddamn game. Dude, <laughs> it's, I, it's so much fun. So <laughs> thir uh, maybe it was Friday. I think it was Friday night. I ended the stream and I had played it all day and I, I, it was fine, but you're right. Like the conversation was nonstop. And so I just booted up the game and I was like, I'm going to play a little bit offline. Not going to do any like thing of value. I'm just going to like clean up the map in this first area and see what I think. Six hours later, I blinked and I was like, oh, this game's actually fucking incredible. Like, <laughs> like I just set out, I left the, I left the main town and came back six hours later and was like, holy shit. This game is phenomenal. Pretty good. Uh, yeah. And it, I, I played it yesterday for, I think, 13 hours straight. I, I took a break to go get food and then came back and just like, just walking around. Like I, the quest stuff, I don't, I truly do not care about. It's stuff like this, this right here, this exact moment that's about to occur when I hear a loud thing in the air. And then this thing just slams down from the sky and attacks me. And I'm like, this game's fucking great. I get it. I understand that, why this game's so fucking good. Um, it, and I'm having a blast with it. And it's it's very much like early Skyrim, I think Elden Ring exploration stuff. It's got those same exact vibes where you'll just happen upon a random cave. And it could be a cave with a ton of value or it could be a cave with like no value. But you don't know until you go fully explore it. Um, and that like aspect of exploration is, it's so good. It's so, so much fun. Um, and I haven't even, I haven't even dabbled. I know you have, uh, Co. I haven't even dabbled in the other uh, classes. Um, you're using, oh. I think like Mystic Knight. I'm still playing the base fighter. Mystic Spearhand. Mystic Spearhand, yeah. Um, and I'm still using the base fighter and having an absolute blast. But uh, I want to maybe check some of that other stuff out um, just to see I had to get down. There was no other way. I had to get down. I was trying to pull the fighter has a way to pull out your shield and like brace for impact. And I forgot what the button was mid. Oh, so. it's just RB. <laughs> it's such a great move too. Yeah. I was kind of wondering if you were going to do that. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was trying to hit. I just forgot what it was. Um, but yeah. So how is, how is the other class? Like, is it good? So I have done archer. I have done fighter. I've done warrior. I've done thief. And now I'm a mystic spear hand and all of the classes so far have been fun. The thing I like to say about this game is this feels more like a reboot than a two. Um, it basically takes all of like the cool ideas that DD1 had, but like the tech and the code and frankly, the resources just weren't there to make it all like fully developed. I played Dragon's Dogma 1 fully with the DLC for the first time uh, last year. And 
How did it you feels... just real quick? How did you play all those characters? Did you like have you to can do play all, that all shit the same terribly? character on the same? All the, you have a character, and then you have a vocation. Yeah, There's it's nine Final Fantasy, and a vocation is a class. Oh, okay, so okay, you can okay, just okay, okay. you can just change whenever you want. And what's even cooler is uh, every vocation, that. as you level it up, has passives, and any other vocation can use any other vocation's passive. So there is a complete advantage to leveling up every class to max vocation level and then mix and matching the passives as you want, which is really fun. Um, but all, all of the classes have felt great. Warrior was like, I went from Warrior to Mystic Spearhand. Mm. Warrior, super slow, big charge up hits, felt very monster hunter-y, not a lot of animation cancels. Like it was, it was, but it hit like a truck. I mean, I was like, I was literally for trolls and stuff. When they fell, I'd get up on their head and hold A for like three seconds, and then I'd flash. And if I release when it goes through, I would do over half their life in one hit. Damn. Like crazy stuff. Um, but really slow. And I mean, if you even tap X, then you're locked into like a three-second swing animation. It was, it was real slow. Then I switched to Mystic Spearhand. This guy's default move is warp to and hit. Really? And then their other hit is warp above and go down. So if you jump and do that, you can just warp on a big creature's head and fall onto it. Can you use that um, to traverse? His main ability is slow down, is to slow enemies down. And he can blow that into an AOE. And then any enemy you slow, you can warp to with a different move. And then you can do like a finisher on him. And then it's got like invulnerability shields. He's got nukes. He's like a magic. It's it's a ridiculous ridiculously fun mobile high damage I, I class pull up and VOD. now jp's gonna switch but no i'm yeah, gonna show your vod awesome. i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up your vod to see okay yeah sure, sure i linked a clip in chat um there was a thing that happened yesterday in the game and i don't remember exactly what it was but i remember afterwards going well please someone clip that and somebody did <laughs> so i don't remember what it was but <laughs> yeah the game this this is uh you know they say in video games that the best games craft like the best moments and this game is like a moments generator. That's oh, yeah. the thing that I love about this game. Like the, the the combat system is so fluid. Everything kind of connects and works so well that like it it just it all just clicks and it feels good. And one of the reasons I say it keeps it feels like a reboot is because like when I played DD1, I could see all the cool stuff they wanted to do, but the implementation was janky. Pawn AI wasn't very good, climbing on enemies was weird, there was no standing on enemies of any kind. Like the camera, I was constantly wrestling with it. It just didn't feel great. Yeah. So this game feels like every one of those systems was either touched or upgraded in some way. Like every one of them. Everything feels more fluid. The climbing feels more fluid. You can stand on enemies now, which completely changes the game. Uh, Pawn AI is super... Pawn AI is not only super crisp, but they do so much more cool stuff now than they did in the first game. Like they actually feel... Like when you set, when they go off and do things with other <laughs> players and they come back, they're like tell you about it and tell you what they learned and like start leading you to quests that they didn't before. And like, it is, it is a super, super cool system. And on that topic, just real quick well. on that topic, I, I heard comments about like the chatter. Is it, is it bad in a lot? It, it's the same as it yes. was in dragon's dogma. Yeah. Which is terrible. It, it's a lot. It, 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 I, it has an arc to it where it starts on and we're like, that's cool. And then it's like, shut the fuck up. And then it starts becoming funny. The problem is, as streamers, we like to talk when there's no one talking. The problem is, so do pawns. That's the problem. Pawn, pawns like to talk when no one's talking. Yeah. So when we're talking to chat, nine times out of ten, I'll be like, no, chat, see the monetization that bad. Hey, did you know there's a quest to the north we could go to if we go through those trees? And it's just like, mother, shut. Yeah, there is a lot. And that yeah. happens. That happened seven times today. Eventually, I just started yelling at my pawns. Yeah. No, and, that's... Yeah. You pick them up, throw them off a cliff, because fuck it. Absolutely. Uh, did you... Ha, have you done the bow quest? That's pretty... Yes. So, I had that quest as my priority quest, but I wasn't doing it. And the entire time that that happened, I was a warrior. And so, for about five hours yesterday during stream... Every three to five minutes, someone would go, Master, you're not using a bow. How are you going to complete this quest? And then another pawn would go, Ah, oh, yes, Master, you need a bow. <laughs> and just out of like pure spite, I didn't change the quest. <laughs> so it would stop doing that. At that point, you can't, you can't give them what they want. So like, for the next six hours, them. everyone in chat was like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Go to it's it. like hydration pop, but with a bow. Yeah, yeah, 
It was really stupid. It was really oh, funny. Master, um, have you had enough water? You've been streaming for 2.3 hours. That's exactly what it is. You should get a glass of water and drink it. That's exactly what it is. Uh, that, that being said, they are chatty. But every once in a while, I'll just be walking around and it'll be like, Master, uh, when I was uh, in another... I forgot what terminology they use for when they go and venture off. Another realm. Another, another realm. Uh, I happened by a cave. Do you want to go to it? And I'll be like, yeah, I want to go to it. And then the pawn just is like, follow me and run straight to a cave that's off in the middle of nowhere because they're very well hidden in this game. And that type of stuff is awesome. Like, I love Great. that they can do that. Um, I'm, I'm also, uh, like Co said, when it comes to someone using your pawn, and them coming back and telling you your stories or telling their stories of what happened. Uh, randomly, Shroud has been using my pawn. Uh, and so I'll just like hop into his stream and he'll just be like murdering NPCs or something like that. And uh, the pawn will come back after I go to the inn and rest and they'll be like, uh, "We there was so many dead people. It was just <laughs> so much death. <laughs> we spent so many time, so much time just killing people out there, master. Uh, and I love that stuff. Uh, I, I love the fact that, you know, Co I, I could bring up Ko's pawn and have a healer in the party. Um, and it's the same exact pawn that he's using all the way down to like mannerisms, items, skills, all that type of stuff. It's really, really well done. Um, but they are chatty. Like that's mm -hmm. everything I just said can be kind of put they into the They have something to say chatty. about every quest, about every situation on every quest, about things you're doing, about things they've seen, about rumors they've heard. Like, it's just... With as wild. much as I've it's heard wild. about it, do they not have, like, a slider for, like... No. Like, like nope. super chatty to, the like... The only slider you know, they have is uh, yeah. pawn voices. You can turn off pawn voices. But sometimes it's they helpful. say really useful good things. So it's I like you don't necessarily want to... fucking hate that. Wanna... Yeah. Yes, but you can't. That's like yes. it's like Mimir yes. all over again. It's like, dude, tell me yeah. useful shit, and that's it. But okay, I, like with Mimir, I think it gets one. It kind of spoils puzzles and that whole conversation. It can kind of get annoying. For this one, it yeah. becomes like th there's a certain charm to it. Where in the first one, that was like what the community knew, and it became kind of the meme, and there was this charm around. You know, fires hate gob or goblins hate fire, master. All that type of shit. like just repeated lines over, over and over and over. And for this one, I kind of feel it's the same. Um, so it's master, you're carrying too much. Yeah, you like me to relieve you of some of your burdens. That happens all the time. Yeah. Um, and and no thanks. Oh shit, it's right there. What? Pawn slider three ninety nine. Oh yeah, it's in there. It's yeah. it's it's you got voice right there. Mm -hmm. You gotta find. I should have looked. That's where the first place I should have looked. Um, yeah, it that that might be one of my like. Uh, we were talking about. Co made the comment about the pawn about uh, weight. When I replayed, when I played the game originally, I played it without mods, and this was ten years ago, whenever that was. When I replayed it about a year ago, maybe two years ago, I had a mod where there was no weight limit on the main character, uh, and it was fantastic because I could just fucking loot everything this now the weight limit system in this game is kind they've put in a thing where there's like bugs around the world that you can go and find it and increases it by a very small minuscule amount and if you get enough of them it still helps but god damn uh i it you are constantly like encumbered in this game like Fucking non, especially if you're even a little bit of a pack rat. I don't even know how Co does anything in this game. I don't. I don't. <laughs> because there's so many things to go around and click, and it's like, oh, let me take that apple. Let me get that apple. Oh, 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 what? Get that piece of bark. And as soon as you get encumbered, uh, or even like, it's like light, average, heavy, very heavy encumbered. As soon as you reach heavy, you start getting penalties to like your sprint and how much stamina you have. Stamina, your movement. Yeah. Um, and all so that. I'm playing a fighter and all of the fighter gear is like heavy tank, heavy armor shit. So from the very get go, I'm already borderline right on heavy. And so I'll go and like pick up an apple. And the second that his finger touches that apple, he gets a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just like, fuck, 
It's like a, it reminds me of like a, like a like a, a a theater mom or a beauty pageant mom. Like, are you sure you want that apple? Yeah. Oh, that. It, well, that's what sure the pawn want- does. That, the pawn says I mean, the line that Ko just said. Sure? The second I pick it up, yeah. master, you're wearing a lot of things. Are you sure you want to take it? Master, master, why so fatty? Yeah. Yeah. Why, master? Why uh, do you do this? And and I, it's. You can clear the. Okay, I thought you were gonna clear the bridge, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Oh, I tried. I tried. You, we have gotten to some crazy places with that dive. Like it Man, is, it is, that's yeah, wild. It goes so real that's real far. That's one thing the fighter doesn't do that well is uh, getting around. But the fighter can. Um, <laughs> it has the thing where you can put your shield out, and it'll call for one of the pawns to jump over, and then you can push the the pawn up into the air, and it's got an upgrade to that. And so I've gotten a bunch of things that are like hidden or chests that are up on walls or scaled walls or, or thrown upon up to a second or third story to then get them to go and get the ladder to knock it down. And that will they do so that cool. whenever? What like, do you mean? I mean if, if you're you, facing if you a them. cliff per se. Oh yeah, yeah. They you get a little bit of control. <laughs> you get a little bit of control uh, like, to where you want to push. This them. will be hilarious. Hey, come over and jump on my shield. Yes, master. Ah! Totally. Yeah, I mean, you Pretty can, much. right now, in any moment, Ko could just turn around, grab any of these pawns, and just chunk them into the water, and they're dead. I saw a clip of that, yeah. You want. Yeah. I heard that was a way to keep them from talking so much. Is that not true? <laughs> I do, it does turn out if you're dead, you don't talk as much. Yeah, if you're dead, you don't talk. Because oh, they're kills dead. kills them. Yeah, you, you have you to go back yes. to town to get them. Uh, oh, so you can play it solo, then? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well... I guess, sort yeah, of. I guess you could kill your, like, main pawn. But That's what I'm saying, pawnless. It's, I, the game's fucking hard if you don't okay. have people to, yeah, like... Yeah, you definitely, like, pawns... A good way to think about this game is it was kind of an attempt to give you an MMO feel as a single player. So you literally okay. get to spec out the rest of your party, and then they all with their little AIs, like, help you take down. But, I mean, they are incredibly good in, in battle. Yeah. You are you are definitely a party leader, and it's it's very tough to solve. Also, a lot of enemies in this game have all sorts of moves to incapacitate you. Uh, cue, cue the Dan clip, please. Do we have the Dan clip queued up? That, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> but there are lots of enemies and situations in this game where, like, there's an ooze, for instance, and if the ooze gets on top of you, then it paralyzes you and just keeps doing damage until you die a pawn needs to come up and hit the goo to release you so if you were playing okay. solo you would just sit there and die um there, there may be ways to get out of it i don't know but there are, there are other situations like the the dan clip's a good deal or a good a good example one there's also some enemies that have really fast attacks and they'll just keep knocking you down unless another pawn like you know drags you out and stuff so this was drags wolves can actually drag you off it's and sucks, then chomp too. on you now, the beautiful part about this situation is Dan only has one pawn and the pawn only has heal spells. So while these wolves <laughs> feast upon Dan's carcass, his pawn just sits there like, per, like what is it, Prometheus? Let and just die. healing him. Let yeah, me no. Die. Absolutely not. So I think, so Dan is just getting <laughs> murdered. <laughs> Great. I hadn't seen this. That's really good. That's really good. And then here's, and then here's another <laughs> grab. Another one. <laughs> like the, this is like the pawn's revenge. Oh, that's funny. It's like, oh, throw me in a river, will you? That's well, you're going to really be eaten. But, but, no, no, it's like, it's like, um, 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 oh, did you already say who, like, the Greek god who keeps yeah, eating his liver? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to say, is it yeah, Prometheus? Yeah. Is that right? No, is that right? Is no, that... it's not. It's, uh, which one was it? No, I, I think you're right. It is Prometheus because he, he's, he's a guy that he gets, gets his fire. liver S- eaten by Sisyphus. the bird. Sisyphus. 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 Sisyphus is no, the boulder. No, 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 no. Sis- Sisyphus is a boulder. No, it's not right. No, it's Prometheus. All right, Prometheus has his liver yeah. eaten all the time. The guy who gets I think his I was right. liver eaten all the yeah, you're time. Right. He gets his yeah, it is Prometheus. Okay, yeah. Ah, oh, look at that. that. There we go. Okay, yeah. great. So we got it. We got it. Yeah. That's what it's like. You keep just getting healed and healed and healed. Like, ah, the pain. Ah. The pain! Oh god, it's coming out! Oh, fuck, he healed me again! The pain! <laughs> over and over and over again! Oh, <laughs> did the pawns run for, out of for the mana record, or something, or could he do this ad infinitum? That's like, that's like Dan's fifth or sixth amazing Dragon's Dogma clip. Oh, like, dude. 
He's, it, he's, he's got some bangers. He's cranking Let's them just out. Say that. He's if got you, some bangers. If you go to the Dragon's Dogma subreddit, I, that community might be one of the funniest singular game communities that I've seen in a very... You would think it would just be nonstop MTX conversation. No, dude. They are posting some of the funniest memes. They're very much... Memes. Dude, they shout is, down MTX discussions. They have no interest in MTX discussions on that Reddit. At least so that I've seen. Funny. Maybe it's changed, but... Yeah, you, you might yeah. be right. Like, And they also have just a ton of clips. But like this... This right here is perfect. Because they are so on point with this thing. When a pawn oh, just God, walks yes. around the world... Every time you're on the road, Zeke, a pawn will just sometimes come up to you and share a long fucking story and say like, oh, can I join you, master, blah, blah, blah. And you do this every time that happens because you don't want to talk to that pawn because it's just a waste of time. Uh, and so like it's this type of shit is so fucking funny. Yeah. They have so many hilarious clips, too. I feel like the, so many awesome moments in this game. It is wild. It is wild. Yeah. I The other. How do I discuss? There is something that can occur in this game that a lot of people have had happen to them much later in the game. And we go back to save points and save stuff uh, that Ko was kind of talking about how it's actually pretty hard to like save scum in this game because there are like, that, for example, there is an arrow that the second you fire this arrow because of what it does is it immediately saves. The second you let loose the arrow from your bow, it saves the game. And so that's how fast they are on stuff. And so there's a thing uh, where something that can happen in the game can be on one of your party members. And if that thing happens, an entire town dies. And I'm not talking like a no, nobody cares about, I'm talking like, <laughs> An entire town will die from this. And it's straight up, people are having issues with it, just like murdering an entire town. And so there's story things to it that I'm not going to get into. But because of that, people are just stopping playing the game because it'll just wipe out an entire town. And there's no way to not have it happen unless you know what it is. And so if you don't know what it is, it could just occur. And wipe out everything. That's what, honestly, that's what I heard about. Like one of the first things I heard about this game, it's like, yeah, there's performance issues, but there's a way to wipe out like entire civilizations to make your performance issues go away. Oh yeah, people killed entire towns just oh, to help. I heard the... about the town NPC killing. I dude, you just scared the shit out of me. Like, it's scary you, as fuck to me because I don't know the full story behind it. I just know what it is <laughs> that causes it somewhat. And people are like, yeah, I just had a 30-hour save. I lost all of uh, Vagrant, for example. All the NPCs in Vagrant are dead. But you can wake <laughs> stone the important ones, right? No. Well, I guess that's technically you down, could. I'm not buying it. Then. I See, guess you the could. Thing, the, the but that, that that's a of, lot of wake stones. The thing that I'm thinking of here is, well, I mean, you wouldn't need all of them, right? Just the ones that have Just the, the ones that have the quest, yeah. Um, yeah. But... That's wild, dude. That's absolutely wild. Yeah. I, I, I'm i now, I'm shook. Yeah. I I, shook. I would say if you wait, so it doesn't always happen. It only if it, oh my God. This is where Most it gets into. questions yeah. and I'm going to spoil myself. And well, it's, I don't oh, know. God. Like, I don't know the specifics about it. I don't know how to answer the questions you just said. I just know that uh, I've seen people say like, me. yeah, I lost this entire town. Someone came into my stream last night and I thought it was like, I thought it was an actual bug. But apparently this is like a thing. Someone in my the only man. It's hundred percent intended. There's voice lines and everything. Yeah, it's a it, yeah. It's that freaking plague, isn't it? Yeah. It's that freaking plague the pawns keep talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know how oh. to stop it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know how to stop it. Oh. I just is that what is I'm so I they keep every time I bring a new pawn in. We'll go to the tavern and they'll be, I heard an interesting rumor. Did you know that we can go <laughs> insane and start like attacking our owners and stuff? Isn't that interesting? Huh? Funny, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Yep. Can exactly. you play offline to avoid that? <laughs> no, no, you can't. You have okay. to have a pawn. A pawn is like a core game mechanic. 
and apparently okay. so so is this so but no it's it's i've wondered for a while with that so oh my god i have so many questions about this like how do you know when they have it what do you do when they have it yeah is it i have like I, how do i oh as someone that has and a i avoid it somehow i yeah as someone that has a, a 30 hour save i'm also nervous. nobody tell him yeah. I want I want Co to come back to drop frames next week. Just super sad. Oh no no no! I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna purposefully. I, I I I gotta be honest. At this point, this is this there, there. I can count the amount of games on one hand that would do something like that. So at this point, I'm gonna purposefully not look into it. Yeah. And if it happens, like that's just what happens. You know, like I feel it's there are certain there are certain moments in certain you, games where you just you don't want to be told about them. You want to experience them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep playing like normal. If it happens, I think it'll make a great story for my kids in ten years. <laughs> you know, well, like, okay. Well, let me just again, let me this, just ask you guys. Games don't do this too often. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you guys a mechanical question. Um, for for some games, like I've had to do this. Don't like, tell me, chat. Don't games that me. don't don't have like cloud saves, like real good cloud saves, or or they take forever, or something like that. Where you can just copy the save file. I, I would zip it, send it to me, to send it, the save file to myself through Discord so I could play it in my bedroom on my other PC. Like, I've had to do that before. Can you do that here? Can you take the save file, copy so, it, put it in a, on your desktop? There, or is, a, it has there is a folder and it does have saves. So you can okay. copy that folder out. But the issue okay. is that if you try to put it back in, that's when you might get the de novo stuff. Hmm. So there, there, you, can, you can save oh. your game. But there's a chance that if you try to reload your game, that it will now. For many, I think that's you know, it's, there's no risk in saving it. What I understand, so there's no I don't reason think not there's... to do that. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I might do that today. Um. But you know, <laughs> I I would be very hesitant about putting it back. Yeah. So okay. I don't know how DeNovo works, but I'm guessing it's a strike policy. Like you know, you don't want to probably want to test something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Yeah. Here. Here's. Uh... No, I just I mean wondering for for shit like that because, you know. <clears throat> I'm the kind of gamer, and I'm sure there's a few of you out there who just wants to see, like, in a game where it's fun and funny, all the fail conditions. I love fail conditions. Like, oh. everybody gets murdered, you die, you fall off a cliff, you do. I love that shit. A lot of them I do them on accident because I'm a bad player. That's true. But some I do on purpose because I just want to see, like, how the death goes. And I would love to be able to be like, okay, I've, I know how this works. I'm going to kill this entire town just to see. And then I want to reload, you know? Yeah, th this game. Oh, dude, <laughs> you talking can... to a safe scummer, man. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is. Um, I, I actually think this game in a lot of ways, and I want to say that there's an interview where he actually commented on this. It's very much a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Like everything, because everything has like weight and meaning to it, that uh, the game actually has a tutorial where it says, Time passes in this game. If you don't do certain quests fast enough, you will flat out fail the yep. quest. Oh, hey, to their credit, have you noticed in the journal? Uh-uh, does it say? So there are quests where there's that, little, there's that little icon in the top right, and that icon means the pawns in your party that know about the quest. That's okay. what the hands mean. I didn't know that, so, so blue, thank you. If it's a blue <laughs> hand, <laughs> yeah, if, it's, if there's a hand with a one, it means your first additional pawn knows if there's a, pawn, a hand with a two it's your second additional oh pawn. okay if it's a blue hand it's your pawn i think it's something like that anyway okay. but here's the thing if the quest is timed we definitely got a quest where when we opened our journal that hand would disappear in an hourglass would pop up behind it it would flash oh shit okay That's now unfortunately helpful. that doesn't cause the secondary arguably bigger problem of quests being completed before other quests so you you still don't know if you have to do quests in particular order, sure. or if you can turn, or if maybe you should forge this item and turn it into two people instead of just giving it to one. Like you never yeah. know that stuff. Yeah. But you do Fuck. know if there's a fail state to time. The sheer amount of fucking people in both <laughs> chats or in all the all the chats saying like, I didn't know that. Like there's hand holding, and then there's like basic fucking game no, this, function dude like, to be fair it's weird this is there, there's a lot of stuff in in this game that it does not tell you expressly what it does like there's there, it's a big game and there's a lot going on there's a lot of stats there's a lot of numbers there's a lot of like like uh dude food can food not only rots it goes through different states of, of rotting yeah no not even of rotting of be so you can get like grape ripened grape aged grape rotten food 
Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, and, and then each of those has like a different effect or a different thing that can happen. Uh, it's wild. But anyway, there's so many different little things at play and the pawn system is, is very unique and different. There's lots of little things like those hand icons, lots of little things where it's just like, you, need, you just need to kind of play and figure it out. There's no tutorial. My there. mind was blown by this. I tweeted it last night and I'm actually curious if, I saw a lot of, I saw a lot of people that also were, were shocked by this. I don't know if you were co or if you already know this, you can camp out in the open, right? Like there's campfire mm -hmm. Zeke to where you can go and camp. And that's how you get HP back and, and what oh, I saw your tweet of yeah. the all in caps about this. There's camping gear, but the mm -hmm. camping gear is only lost if you're attacked at night. Otherwise it uses it constant. Like it's reusable. I'm walking around with like, eight camping gear things on all my characters, which weigh a massive fuck ton yep. of inventory. <laughs> they're not like tent. They're Final not, Fantasy. they're not single use <laughs> unless you get interrupted. And so, like I have 30 hours, 30 hours. So, so you, you never, you never notice the numbers not going down when you camp. No, because I would get attacked. In the middle of my I've camp. I've never been attacked. Really? I've gotten attacked I've probably three or like four times. Eight or nine times. I okay. don't think I've. Cat, have we ever been attacked while camping? We have on the uh, cart. Yes, the cart, the cart gets. Yeah, if you go awesome. out at night. Love the carts. Yeah. 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 But no, I don't think I've ever <clears throat> been attacked in camp. And, but, and, and so for me, I just never noticed them. Oh. I just noticed they never went That's down. why I always brought uh, them because I was always losing them because I kept getting attacked. Makes and I was, sense. Uh, and so, it, like, the reason this is a big deal is because they weigh a lot. Well, a, a huge amount of people in chat are like, oh, I didn't know that. So okay, you're clearly yeah. not alone yeah, in this. Great. <laughs> I, feel, I feel very good. Uh, oh, also, I do know this. I do know this from a tutorial. And I've been good about this. So it makes me wonder if this is, oh, God. Uh, every time I camp, I clear out around it. Yes, that, that does help. Yeah. So, like, the enemies that attack your camp, I think there's, like, a higher chance that there's physical, like, near your camp when you do it, which is... What a cool system. I mean, that's yeah, just, it's cool. Like, that's awesome. That's it's awesome. cool. Uh, Zeke, this, this might interest <clears throat> you. This is not a spoiler. It's just a class. Uh, this is the trickster I class. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to finding. This Look one. at what you can do with the trickster class. This is from that Reddit. You can do a little shimmy across the bridge. He created Whoa, a ghost. A shimmy. He flew it across the bridge and then he had the ghost appear as a decoy. The mob sees the ghost and jumps off yeah! to attack it, and he kills yep. it. Yep. How fucking and, cool and, is that? And loses all He lost all loot. the loot. He lost all the loot. But how cool is that? Like, that's such a cool thing. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. If they gave you the loot of the creatures that you use fun things on, I, I would roll that class probably. But the fact that you have to sacrifice loot for all the cool things that class does is, a like, yeah. it does not matter how cool that class is. It does not matter. <laughs> yeah. That is, no, I'm sorry. It doesn't I matter. I mean, you don't get, I guess you get some they, stuff. What they should have done is they should have given him like a, a passive that made it so like any enemy killed by gravity while this class is auto looted or something. And that would, that would have made it like instant go to instant awesome. Good, yeah. Oh yeah. man. Oh man. Here, here's another great clip where your pawn's trying to help you. And then you go to grab it. <laughs> 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 it just kills you both. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, oh, is, is is there? A, I'm guessing you just yes or no. Is there a story reason why the water has like fucking tentacles that kill you? Yes. Yeah. There's a story there, there reason. Are, there okay. are there okay. are world lore reasons why there is okay. a brine, as they call it. Okay. Also, really helps with coding. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Saved a lot of money on swimming enemies. Oh, so you don't have to, you don't have to code swimming or underwater or anything. No underwater, no nothing at all. Water just does not exist. Uh, it, it's no boats. Like, it's just a, it's it's no basically rafts. water's lava is what it is. All yeah. water is lava. Yeah, water's lava. <laughs> yeah, that clip RKO out of nowhere, crossing the bridge. The pond just Jay, puts him Jay, out. He's Adam, dead. Do you see that clip I put in the in the in the? Uh, kind of curious what that is. Let me see. Can I show it? I, on stream? I remember. I remember to ask. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and show it on stream. I remember asking for it to get clipped, but I don't remember what it was. But I, I remember. Oh was, yeah, I yeah. This happened cool to event. me too. Uh, the, in the town, a cyclone. Oh, that's spawn. right. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm just like in the main town. There's that big two hand weapon, by the way. Yeah. Um, that's it. I was just in the main town, and this troll rushed the front gates of the town, 
killed the guards and was fighting like an army of guards in the town square. This was not like a quest. This was no, this was this right here. It was amazing. It's so cool. Oh! Dude, the, the combat has so many like cinematic moments when you're fighting these big was creatures. I was incredible. I I dude, that's some like hairy housing shit. I fucking love it. There was a moment yesterday I came over uh, a hill and there's a campfire and uh it was nighttime and the lighting system is so good in this game. Uh and it, it really makes things badass. I came over this hill and I heard a like a grunt. And it was a pretty large grunt. And I was like, there's not a fucking dragon here, right? Like, that's not a fucking dragon. I walk two feet and I see two eyes pop up in the shadows. And it's sitting right in fucking front of me, this giant goddamn dragon, sleeping. And I'm just like, well, I guess I gotta fight it. <laughs> I just started fucking the dragon but there's so many moments like that where there's yeah. just two little yellow beady looking eyes in the middle of the forest kind of doing this or there's there's like a red uh <laughs> red floating thing off in the distance and you're like the hell is that is that a is that like a lich or something like what's what because we'll see what that is i'm so, it's so cool like the exploration and that type of stuff is just so well done um, that it, it really does. It's, it's Dungeons and Dragons. It's Lord of the Rings. It's all that type of stuff. Um, and the other thing, Zeke, we didn't talk about it cause Ko and I are not playing them. Casters in this game are oh my super God. cool and super well done. Just like they Zeke. were in the first one. Zeke, this game is the caster power fantasy. That's what this game is. Yeah. Like I know you've been wanting like in Bloodborne and previous games, you've talked about wanting to be like a powerful caster. There's a base caster class that then evolves into a like much more offensive caster class. And it is like you're doing the, the effects and everything and like the way that it interacts with the enemies and the terrain. It's it's second to none. Definitely check it out for that alone. Yeah. I will be keeping my eye on the first big 1.0 patch. <laughs> 1.0 yes, patch. When you can, I, I, when you can reset your game. Dogma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love yeah. Dragon's Dogma. I played it. I, I think I played all the way through it, if I'm not mistaken, like years ago. And uh I want I want to play this. Yeah. I also don't want to be pissed off while I'm playing it. You know, it's to ruin my fucking good time. Yeah. 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 Uh this, I hear you. this is great. You just happen upon a Cyclops who's serving as a bridge, and then your pawn throws a rock at the Cyclops to knock it down, hits you instead, and then you die. Just shit like that. It's just a comedy of errors and it's why the game Love is it. so fun. It's it's fantastic. But yeah, uh, shit, we're done. That's that's the show. Uh, we spent the entire show gabbing about this. Um, we will probably continue playing it. I have no no idea like how long the game is. I've seen it. It depends on I guess if you rush main story, um, or if you're just doing other stuff, or what. Um, so we'll talk about it next week. I'm sure. Uh, Co, where are you at with Final Fantasy? So I am doing a 100% run of Final Fantasy. I've done everything there is to do in the entire game, and I'm up to chapter 10, I want to say. Okay. So 50-plus-ish hours in. Okay. Starting tomorrow, Morning Dragon Dogma 2, Afternoon Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Cozy Evening Stream, Yakuza Infinite Wealth Like a Dragon. You finished Yakuza, did, right? Story-wise? I did beat the main story. Okay. The main story of Infinite Dragon uh last right before i left but i have also said and want to do the side stories which are a big part of the game and i have not been doing a lot of them on my main story push so we have a lot of stuff to do but yeah, yeah. it's gonna be uh okay whoo it's gonna be a thing are you doing a spoiler cast uh i will eventually i haven't finished the game yet i'm i'm right okay. where you're at and i'm kind of doing i towards the you end of the steam? game huh do you lose steam yeah, in a big way. Um, really? Not not because I don't enjoy the game. I think I burnt myself out because I played uh, Remake oh. and the DLC the week prior. Oh. And so I got like 40 yeah. hours, 50 hours of that. And then on top of it, I have Rebirth. We talked about it last week when Jesse Cox was on. But like towards the end, the mini games just get fucking crazy uh, in terms of how many there are. 
Um, cause I'm right where you're at and it's like every, there's a lot, every fuck. I got to walk two feet. Oh, let's put a mini game in there. You want to play? You want to do a Moogle? Here's a Moogle. Do a walking mini game. Hey, Left foot, right foot. hey JP, oh, I'm here to talk out. about the, the walking mini game. I'm a Moogle, JP. Here we go. It's just wow. Like, that is horrifying. <laughs> it's just and not. No, I don't have chlamydia. I know I look like a koala, but I'm not one. <laughs> yeah. So like that kind of, that's been a lot. I have definitely lost steam, but I do want to finish it. So cool. I've been told. Just like you have, I'm sure that we're like four, 30 to 50 hours yep. from finishing, which we're, I've been told about like three fifths yeah, around there, which like, like not quite, <laughs> there's, there's a pretty defined three quarters from what I've heard. So. Classic streamer take, but like fucking shit. That's so long. Man. It's a long game, dude. I've put 55 I, I've, hours into this game and I'm just over half fucked. Dude, kind of wild. Like, uh, I, I put a tweet up about this. In the last half year, we've gotten Baldur's Gate 3, Rogue Trader, Dragon's Dogma 2, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Infinite Wealth Like a Dragon. Like, uh, oh God, there are even, and there's there's even more. Like, giant 100 plus hour adventures. Like, it is a magical time for long form RPG fans. It yeah. Is, it is. There's some. No, I mean, not to mention, reloaded like, for those that are playing that, absolutely. The building uh, games that have come out, like, in Shrouded and Power World, those are yeah. 100 yep. plus hours. Oh, sometimes. Cyberpunk 2.0 and the expansion. 100 hours. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Unicorn Overload. It's Overlord. been a good, it's been a good year. It Games, I need like a, I need a, like a 10 hour experience. <laughs> Just, you know. You should play Pacific Drive. I should. I didn't finish that. The palate I, cleanser, man. I got. Uh, I finished that. You did. You finished it completely. Was that on stream? No, no, no. That oh, was my. Okay. That was my off stream relaxed game. Yeah, and it was. You liked it? Oh, I mean, I just I loved it. I absolutely loved it. There's just a couple of things that I would, I would like to go into, but not in the time we have. Left. Okay. Oh, right. yeah. I know. I know. Zeke has two minutes. I I really wanted to hear about Alone in the Dark. That's on oh my list. fuck that's i did want to yeah yeah <laughs> it's bad right zeke it's, it's bad oh it's, it's good. good it's no, good it's good. is it good bad it's good somebody it's, it's great somebody came in somebody came into my channel and, and I, we were talking about alone in the dark and i was like i'm really excited i want to play it i wonder how it is and somebody's like well zeke actually said it wasn't terrible so that's means it's probably really good <laughs> wow okay yeah i was like okay next no, week i mean it's nice. it is good it's it, it it plays a lot like a uh like a Resident Evil or a Silent Hill type of game. It doesn't have the same like vibe, but it's okay. like the gameplay mechanics of it are are, awesome. are pretty cool. similar to that. Okay. Um, but it's it's the voice acting is very good. It does have a little bit of FPS issues uh, for it had it for me, like going into like cutscenes and stuff like that. It would like and like stutter, but then it yeah. caught up and it would be fine. But other than that, like it was it's not a bad game at all. It's it's you know it it's a far fucking cry from the original. I'll say that. So that make that that right there is an improvement. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I'd I'd love to. Uh, we'll we'll talk about it next week because I do want to hear about old yeah. Alone in the Dark and kind of everything else. We only talked literally Dragon's Dogma today for yeah ninety minutes. Uh, jeez. Uh, yeah. In terms of the spoiler cast, we will figure something out. Uh, no idea if Max will be on it. We obviously want him to be, but he's a super busy guy these days. Uh, so and also we'll see. he he to be to be blunt, he finished the game yesterday. Yeah, me and JP probably won't finish it for a couple weeks. Yes, and by that time he'll have probably said everything he wants to say about fifty five times on <laughs> ten to fifteen different podcasts. Correct. So <laughs> so. I mean, I don't know if he'll want to be our sloppy 16th, but you know, I mean, we're always up for it, but we're welcome you know, at that it, point. Yeah. It's kind of like, what else is there to, to yeah. talk about? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so funny. That I, that's what I woke up to on Twitter was about 20 tweets going, JP, it's 3 AM. Where are you? Max just finished this playthrough. Are you going to do a spoiler cast? And I'm like fucking <laughs> just like passed out. And these motherfuckers are like, where the fuck is the spoiler cast? <laughs> it's like, ready? don't you realize I haven't beaten it? <laughs> like, yeah, it was funny. It was just not shit. a concern. Yeah. Well, That's what they're God. like, yeah, you don't need to be on it. Just put Max <laughs> just on put it. Max, just ask some questions of you. <laughs> just, just have him do a monologue <laughs> on his thoughts. 
And we'll call it the, the oh, Drop Frame man. Spoiler Cast. <laughs> it's fun. Zeke, do some shout outs. You got to go RP. Sorry for running a little late. No, it's all right, man. Thank you guys very much for being here. My name is Ezekiel the Third. You can find me at or slash Ezekiel underscore III on Twitch, Twitter, or X and YouTube. Uh, Ezekiel the Third, all spelled out on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you, Co and JP, for being my my boon companions every week as we do this drop frames every Sunday. I will be on live at right after this. I'm going to twitch.tv slash table story to do uh, my Blade Runner weekly ta- uh, tabletop role playing game. It's very good, and today's episode is going to be. Ooh, it's going to be a good one. It's a juicy one today. Um, at least that's what we're thinking. But uh, if you want to catch me doing streaming, I take Mondays off, so I'll be off tomorrow. But I'm on at 10 a.m. Pacific, and I'm hoping and I'm thinking that it's going to be South Park Day on Tuesday. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy and crack open some South Park uh, um, Snow Day and check that out. And I'll have a special guest on. My, my little brother is, is here in town. He's going to join me. So. Nice. Hey, fun times. Cool. Thanks for watching. Fantastic. Have a good time on the old RP. Co, what do you got going on? Do some shout outs. Sure. As always, big thank you to JP and Zeke. I appreciate it. This is a uh, Balder Co reporting in. Anyway, like I said, next week we're going to start our triathlon. Uh, to, in the morning is going to be DD2. The afternoon is going to be Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And the evening is going to be Yakuza Like a Dragon. I have no idea what the schedule is going to be like after tomorrow. Um, I have never in my 10 years been playing three large scale games like this in parallel. So I'm, we're going to see how it goes. Baldur's Co. 3. Yes, Balder Co. like that. Um, but on that note, we are going to give it a try. We also have a ton of other games that we want to play, like Horizon Forbidden West and Alone in the Dark and Finishing Pacific uh, Drive and Sons of the Forest and Stardew 1.6. There's, there's a lot right now. There's a lot. So anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week, if not before then. And I'll be back on tonight in probably two and a half, three hours for a little bit more Dragon's Dogma 2. See you guys then. Fantastic. Hi, hello. We're going to be doing a sponsored stream uh, right after we wrap up here. I'm going to be jumping in to some Horizon for Ben West on the PC. Spoilers, I've played it for five minutes. I'm sponsored, but it's the best looking game I've ever seen on PC. Uh, <laughs> like it, uh, It's fucking gorgeous. Uh, so we're going to play the, the first two hours of that. Um, and then probably some Dragon's Dogma after that because I can't put it down. Um, that's probably everything. Maybe we'll work some Final Fantasy in there. I got to figure out how I'm going to finish that over the next course of a couple of weeks. Uh, and then Path of Exile next Friday. Um, that's kind of everything I got going on. That's everything we got going on. We'll see what happens over the next week and then come back uh, next Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Talk about all that stuff. When's the next time you're traveling, Code? Was that was that your travel for the year? Are you good? I think TwitchCon. Oh, okay. That's uh, I do want to go to TwitchCon. Is that October? So. That's Spall, fall? October? Something, something like, like that? that. Spall? Yeah. Anyways, yeah, hey, Barry, up. nice of you to show up. Barry, good for you. You're three hours late, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Fix the break screen, Barry. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to go yell at Barry. We're going to get out of here. Have a good one. Bye-bye. See you, Co. Bye, Zeke.